A bewitching Halloween moon welcomes Mac football to the state of Illinois, where by ground the Northern Illinois Husky offense reigns supreme with a powerful attack that always seeks the end zone. Now Eckridge Zips look to spearhead into November with a treat of Halloween victory. So let the pumpkins abound with faces that tell the tale of a football Saturday. Go ahead and howl, big dogs. Akron and Northern Illinois coming at you next on ESPN Plus. Before you trick or treat in the state of Illinois, you've got to get ready for Mid American Conference football. Don't you love the spirit? As we get set for a Saturday of Mac football presented by Marathon. Come on inside Husky Stadium on the campus of Northern Illinois University, DeKalb, Illinois. Welcome, everybody. J.D. Brookhart's got his acrid zips in to see Jerry Kill and the Huskies of Northern Illinois. Bewitching and beguiling and a happy Halloween to all of you with football attached to it. No tricks or treats here, Doug Champlin. I'm Michael Regga as we get set for Akron and Northern Illinois. Central Michigan may be setting the benchmark in the Mid-American Conference right now, Doug, but Jerry Kill and this Northern Illinois program is proficient on both sides of the football. They think they have a big November waiting for them. You know, Central is the team to beat, but if you look at it, Northern is right there with them statistically. They play well towards the end of the year, and that's how you win championships is finishing the way you start. Finishing means running the football. They've done it for decades here in DeKalb in this Northern Illinois program. And this year, diversity. They lead the Mac at 196 yards per game. And Miko Brown and Chad Spann have been superb. Brown and Spann may be one of the best one-two punches in all of FBS. The guys that get it done inside, outside, can take it the distance. Spann really finds the end zone when he gets close, has a nose for it. Two good running backs. Absolutely. That's what they do here at Northern Illinois. J.D. Brookhart and the Akron Zips know that. It's been a tough ride. Uh, they haven't won since week two, but they've gone through three quarterbacks. True freshman Patrick nicely gets the opportunity today because starter Chris Jackamane and his backup Matt Rogers no longer uh, able to play football. You know, nicely was a guy that was third on the depth chart, running the scout team, not even really getting a lot of looks in practice. And now he's the guy they're going to. He's gotten better every week, and they're looking for big things from the true freshman. Very nice numbers last week up at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, albeit in an Akron loss. If you want to play defense on Halloween Saturday, you've got to emulate Jake Kaufman. You like that look? Alice Cooper's got nothing on him. Kaufman and Northern Illinois ready to battle Akron. Coming up next. This afternoon's ESPN Plus game on a Halloween Saturday being brought to you by Marathon, fueling the American spirit. Also by Taco Bell. Make sure you think outside the bun. By First Energy, our energy is working for you. By American Family Insurance, to find an American Family Insurance agent near you, visit AmFam.com. By National City, not part of PNC, they're proud to be the official bank of the Mid-American Conference. And by AT&T, your world delivered. All right, let's take a look at our keys of the game brought to you by autotrader.com. Find the car you want at the price you want, autotrader.com, the ultimate automotive marketplace. Let's start with J.D. Brookhart and his Akron Zips. And Akron today, they've got to keep up with the Joneses. Mr. Andre Jones, he can play quarterback, defensive back, wide receiver, very versatile. Watch where he lines up. On the job training, nicely, the freshman at quarterback, he is the guy. Jack O'Man goes down with suspension. Rogers goes down with an injury. Keep your eye on the freshman. How he does today is how the Akron offense is going to go. And then you look on the other side of the ball, you look at Coach Kill and his team's keys to get run the rock. Simple and plain. Span and Miko Brown, two of the better running backs in all of FBS. Two-headed monster, they definitely get the job done and protect this house. They are one of the best defensively in the red zone. They do not give up points or field, field goal or touchdown. They've got to get the job done today to stop this Akron offense. This Halloween Saturday, how does it uh, embark in the state of Illinois? It's a chilly one. Temperature about 40 degrees. It's cloudy, but you know it cannot dampen the spirit and enthusiasm of this Halloween Saturday. Northern Illinois at four up and three down. They're two and one in the Mac West. And, of course, Jerry Kill in his second season here at uh, the helm of uh, the Huskies. Bronco Rogovich to tee it up, and uh, we are underway. Settle back and enjoy it on this Halloween Saturday. And 
for Northern uh, Illinois uh, on that return for the uh, the Huskies is Ricky Kreider and uh, Kreider will uh, come across at 25 yard line. So let's bring on this Northern Illinois offense and you'll get a look at Demarcus Grady now Chandler Harnish the starting quarterback of this Northern Illinois football team uh, hurts a couple weeks ago as Demarcus Grady got his start against Miami the young man from Grand Rapids Michigan in that 27 to 22 Northern Illinois win he's got Miko Brown offset with him and this is Miko Brown on the first carry of the afternoon Brown will bang his way uh, over the uh, 30 yard line so give Miko Brown about three and let's call it second and seven let's take a look at the impact players brought to you by National City Bank and the impact guys Landon Cox he's the leading receiver but watch his blocking downfield opens up a lot of big runs Corey Hansen leads the team very active linebacker Ed in Adamski Ed Eddie Adamski center the leader of this offensive line have had the same starters all year consistency is big in the running game They'll run that reverse out of the slot with Miko Brown and he got stacked up at the 35 yard line you take a look at uh, the the starting lineup from Northern Illinois uh, a top of our uh, top of your screen uh, keep an eye on uh, Eddie Adamski where's number 50 Adamski uh, the center making his 36th consecutive start 45th of his career so Miko Brown with a couple of carries uh, for eight yards it's going to bring up a third and two with that football at the 35 yard line and a four wide for Northern Illinois and their third year sophomore quarterback Demarcus Grady You've got Chad Spann with them offset uh, Grady to keep the football. He got popped and uh, very, very close to the first down. That hit came from Brian Wagner, who wears number 34 for the Akron Zips. You're going to hear a lot about Brian Wagner today, uh, Springfield Catholic Central High School in Ohio. Also got some help. Did Wagner from uh, Sean Fobbs. He's a very, very active linebacker. Just a freshman, runs sideline to sideline very well. With a scrambling quarterback, you have to, your linebackers have to pursue and play smart or else he can hurt you badly. Grady picked up that first down for the 38, his first throw of the afternoon, and it is caught, caught by uh, the freshman Perez Ashford. So Grady on time, firing the strike to Perez Ashford, the 168-pound true freshman. We've seen a lot of dynamic true freshmen in the conference this year. We have, and, and like you said earlier, Northern loves to run the football, but they are very capable when they have to go to the air. And when you have guys like that on the perimeter that can make plays from a short pass that's big in your offense. So give Grady and Perez Ash for nine. There you look at the numbers of uh, Demarcus Grady. Seven of 14. Go back to the running game and that's uh, Chad Span, a punishing runner. Span to the midfield stripe where middle linebacker Brian Wagner took him down. So Chad Span will move the sticks. Span out of Indianapolis, Indiana. With uh, 12 uh, touchdowns this year already, 11 of them on the ground. And that's what he does. You look at him, he's not a huge guy, close to 200 pounds, but he runs very, very tough between the tackles. And when he gets close to the end zone, he definitely gets in there. And Marcus Grady out of the gun with Span with him. Run the football again with Chad Span. Five more before Brian Wagner made the hit. Again, Wagner, that young middle linebacker, redshirt freshman. There he is. Uh, He's on Game Phil Steele's uh, mid-season Mid-American Conference uh, defensive squad. Phil Steele, one of the, uh, the top uh, analysts of college football around uh, the Mid-American Conference. And there's the numbers on Brian Wagner. J.D. Brookhart just raved about him. Just superb this year. He does. He was a bit sick last week against Syracuse. Tackles were down. But do not be surprised if he has double-digit tackles again here today. Now off play action to Marcus Grady being chased to the boundary and he'll get pushed out of bounds. Running Pushing him out was Green. Manley Waller out of Decatur, Georgia. Where's number six? So Grady got back to about the line of scrimmage. It's going to bring up a uh, now third down and we'll call it a long five. And this is the, the, the issue sometimes with Northern and Grady at quarterback. Very mobile quarterback. And when he has time to throw the football, but has not thrown it a lot. And the thing is, when you're in these third and four plus, third and five plus situations where you have to go to the air, you really test his arm and test him as a quarterback. 
Yeah, he played versus Western Illinois and uh, against Western Michigan. And Jerry Kill, uh, as you hear referee Stan Evans, is going to get the uh, the first time out of the afternoon. It's about four minutes in. Northern Illinois facing the third and five when we get back. When you search for a car at autotrader.com, we send more cars your way than anyone. A lot more cars. So Delighted you're part of Mid-America Conference Football presented by Marathon. Got to get the heaters going today. It's going to get up over 40. It's great football weather. It's Halloween and Jerry Kill and his Northern Illinois Huskies. They, they love to run the football. Number one in the back at 196 yards per game. They've rushed it for over 200 yards five times this year. Now that wide receiver screen is caught by Marcus Lewis. And Lewis will wiggle his way near that 40-yard line, which was the line to make. Lewis, big receiver, Doug, 210 pounds, sophomore, stands six foot three, made his 11th catch of the year, first down, Husky. And Lewis used all of that size to break the tackle. This is a great job. This pass is simply a long toss to your wide receiver. You get your playmakers the ball on the perimeter in space, and you hope they make the play just like Lewis did. Yeah, he broke a tackle of Manly uh, Waller and uh, also out of a hit of Jalil Carter. Now run that draw play with uh, Miko Brown. Brown only got a couple. The left side of that uh, Akra defensive line, Hassan Hazimi, who wears number 96. Hazimi got some help from Almondo Sewell, that big fella right there that just walked out of your screen from Trenton, New Jersey, the defensive tackle. And they're going to be tested up front. They're going to have the defensive line for Akron is going to have to do what they do very well and shed blockers. Don't stay blocked and do not allow yourself to be engulfed by Northern's offensive linemen. They're going to run the ball right down their throat all afternoon. That's second and eight now. Demarcus Grady will go back out of the shot glen. And run that inside handoff to D'Amico Brown. Miko Brown and Miko Brown got to take it to the ground as he hit the 30. Five yard line, and it's going to bring up a third down and six. And this is a very proficient third down football team in conversions is Northern Illinois. And a team like Northern that's run the ball so well here for so long, their offense has evolved. They do run the spread, but they still run down the spread. And what they do is they get the offensive lineman to get wider splits, spread the defensive lineman out, and they get three, four yards at a time. And they're always one play away from breaking that long run. Now they'll run out of the eye. Off play action, Demarcus Grady going to pull the football down, and he's got a first down inside the 30-yard line. Chased out of bounds by Akron freshman linebacker Brian Wagner, but Grady with the, they challenge the edge, Doug, and that speed out on the edge is what Demarcus Grady brings to this offense. That's definitely what Demarcus Grady, but what the play action does with their ability to run the football, play action. It demands, it commands the respect of the linebackers. They have to respect the run. So they come down, allows Grady to get to the edge, and then good blocking on the perimeter by receivers and downfield. Great job. Picks up the first down. You speak how proficient Northern Illinois is. Uh, not on opening drives on the year, though. Go right back to the ground game. Miko Brown could not get started. Brian Wagner again uh, around uh, that hit as he picks Miko Brown off the turf. And this is a newly installed field, field turf here at Husky Stadium. They uh, they uh, put uh, this new addition in June, July, and uh, it's held up very, very well. As our producer Greg Logan, director Dave Taskin, all of our terrific crew give you a look. Real nice football set here in uh, the, uh, the western part of the state of Illinois. On second and 11. Demarcus Grady to put it up, and that throw was incomplete. He wanted Landon Cox out of Calumet City here in the uh, the state of Illinois, and uh, and missed him on that second down throw. Going to bring up third and long. A lot of their passes are set up off of their their run, so a nice play action. They get the linebackers down, but the secondary definitely wasn't fooled. Landon Cox, who was their leading receiver, also a great blocker downfield, he was very very well covered on that play. So oh, Demarcus Grady again, Chandler Harnish, the uh, the starting quarterback for this football team, the, uh, the sophomore injured, and uh, there's the uh, the perfection so far in this opening drive. They uh, convert about 32 percent of their third down chances on the year. This is a big one, third and 11. Bubble screen again, and he is uh, on time with Perez Ashford 
Ashford trying to battle his way. The line to make was down at the 18. He's going to come up a couple of yards short. We'll see what Jerry Kills looking to do now on fourth and about three. And, and you see Ashford, they, they like that long toss pretty much as a long play to the wide receiver. Good job by Ashford, but look, look who's over there. Wagner gets all the way out to the sideline to help break down the receiver. Well, Mike Salerno will come on the football field out of the hole to Ryan Morris. This will be from 37 yards with the uh, the cross breeze kind of blowing right into the uh, the face of Mike Salerno from the right hash. Oh. And it is blocked. Blocked by Akron's defensive front. They got a piece of it to deny Northern Illinois' Mike Salerno. Well, Akron comes up with the stop and uh, Jerry Kill. And what, what happened with our, our uh, field goal kick unit? And usually when you get a block, it's from the inside, that inside penetration in the A and B gap. That's what they get. I can't see who gets the paw up. It looks like looks like number 96 and may have Hassan got that. Hassan Hazimi. That's who it was. Hazimi got his hand up. Great job. So a stop for Akron. Patrick Nicely, the true freshman from the state of Ohio, on next. On My 50 Chicago, Cable 8. Got to stay bundled up on a Halloween Saturday. Uh, Akron just denied Northern uh, Illinois an opportunity to get on the board. And uh, J.D. Brookhart, like that, now in his sixth season as a head football coach, had terrific years in 04 and 05. Six and five, seven and six, Big Mac records, and uh, six and two, five, three, and back to the Mac title game. And now with Patrick Nicely, the true freshman, looking to put it up. Nicely throw off the hands of Deshaun Miller. Miller, who uh, was the uh, the Mac East Division Special Teamer of the Week, we'll tell you more about that. So here's Patrick Nicely, comes from a uh, a tradition-rich football family at Willoughby South High School uh, near the Cleveland area. Big, strong-arm quarterback, 6'4", 220. Nicely making his third start, the fourth true freshman uh, to start at quarterback for the Zachary program. And this is Broderick Alexander with the first carry of his collegiate career. Alexander taken down uh, by uh, Jake Kaufman. Let's take a look at our impact players. Start with uh, Akron, brought to you by National City Bank. And the impact players are Andre Jones. He can play anywhere, All offense, defense, special teams, big time football player. Brian Wagner, we've seen him earlier. Very active, just a freshman, leading in FBS in all freshmen for tackles. And Deshaun Miller, very dynamic kickoff return man can get the job done at the wide receiver position also. All right, Patrick Nicely, number one rated uh, quarterback in the state of Ohio a year ago. Look at it, third and eight. Nicely to trigger the out route, and it is off the hands of his intended receiver, Anthony Merriweather. Well, Merriweather, that was right there. Got to make that catch as nicely uh, through that out very well, Doug. That's a great play on the corner route. You see it's, it's nicely run. He gets inside release and he gets back outside. He's got to catch this football. But you see nicely when they give him time and they protect him. Just a freshman. He looks good. Throws a nice ball. But they've, you've got to catch that football. you got to help your quarterback out, help your team out. You see Zach Campbell to boot it away to Tommy Davis. Davis standing inside his own 40 for Northern Illinois. And uh, now Davis is uh, going to be joined in that return spot by Perez Ashford. Campbell with that line drive shot. Davis will field it on a hop at the 40. Tommy Davis outside the numbers. Got a terrific block. And Davis still alive inside the 35 yard line. Now a flag flew late right in front of that Northern Illinois bench. Well, Davis uh, was the recipient of a crushing block that was uh, laid on for uh, Northern uh, Illinois, by Northern Illinois. But let's check the flag with Stan Evans. During the return, the illegal push in the back. On the return team, number 44. 10 yard penalty, first down. Yeah, that linebacker John Tranchatella put a crushing block on. Watch Tranchatella, 42. Boom, Doug, right there. That's how you track your guy down. You see him, you know he's coming to you. Good job by Tranchatella. 
Unfortunately, this is coming back. That's a great return. Huge play. Special teams is the third part of, of football. There's offense, defense, special teams, and you hate to see a big play like that come back, but hey, that's what the refs are out there for, to, to find those blocks in the back. They found one, they bring it back. Well, that's typical, though, of Jerry Kill's football team. Tranchatella, a senior, uh, in the mix at linebacker, but playing special teams, but had that crushing block that sprung Tommy Davis wiped out. So Northern Illinois will start at their own 49 yard line for Demarcus Grady. Go back to the ground game and this is Chad Span. Grady got a block and Span is free. Up this near boundary to the 30 yard line. Demarcus Grady. Doug when you look at this back watch the quarterback lay a block on for his running back Span. And that's what you call just playing for your team. You, know, you don't have the football. But you do, you're being a football player. You're right here, you're running your fake, you see a guy coming, get down, get a nice block, and Span does the rest. Both of these running backs, Span and Brown, are the type of backs that will get one yard here, two yards here, and they have the ability to take it to the house on the very next carry. Span, very versatile, great run. Two touchdowns last week in the big win over Miami for Chad Span, career high, 156 yards, and Span with that tough running off the right side. He got five down to the 20. Five yard line, Brian Wagner again. Where's number 34 for Akron? So there's Span and the touchdowns we mentioned, Doug. 11 of them lead the MAC. And again, 156 yards last week in the, with two touchdown runs of 42 and 40 at Jaeger Stadium in Oxford, Ohio. You know, and this is what they do here at Northern. They run the football. That's their bread and butter, and they always have traditionally had good running backs here. And Span and Brown are just their next two guys in the machine to get the job done. I'd give Span five and call it second and five for Demarcus Grady. Motion from Kyle Scarb and uh, Akron there. They uh, were waiting for Miko Brown. Tackle made by Wagner. We mentioned that the run game has uh, been absolutely phenomenal here in this Northern Illinois program. Two of the best, Garrett Wolf and Michael the Burner Turner, both of them in the NFL. Wolf with. Chicago Bears and Turner with Atlanta. You know, I played with Michael Turner in San Diego, and I tell you one thing about him is that he's a very deceiving back. Mm -hmm. You know, he's very, very powerfully Third built, but has the speed to take it to the house. Garrett Wolf, diminutive, extremely tough for his size, was insanely productive here in college and having a good NFL career. Third and five, Demarcus Grady out of the gun. Grady in trouble, but got out of a tackle. Grady inside the 15. What a strong run from the third-year sophomore quarterback out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Remember now, he's the backup to the injured Chandler Harnish here for Jerry Kill and his Huskies. You know, Harnish is more of a pocket passer, likes to sit back. You know, he manages the offense, but Grady does a good job. He's like an extra running back back there. He can break tackles. Good speed. Look at the balance right here. Should have been brought down. Protects the football. Breaks tackles. Takes three men to bring him down. And next thing you know, he's at the 11-yard line. Great job. And yeah, carried the football 10 times for 55 yards last week, as you see there graphically. And Demarcus Grady, this is a straight quarterback run out of that shotgun spread formation. And Grady got five down to the six-yard line. Marcus Grady taken down by uh, Ryan Wagner. Let's take a look at red zone efficiency for this uh, this Akron football squad and uh, excuse me for uh, Northern Illinois rather. And up to 96 percent. Now, you know how good is that? 26 of 27 times in the red zone they put points on the board. And not just points they've had out of those trips has been 17 touchdowns. So. <laughs> that, that's great work once they get inside the red zone. Nico Brown stacked up after he got a couple inside the five, and on that hit, James Harvey. Harvey uh, prepped in the state of Pennsylvania, 290 pound sophomore. There, Big James wears number 97. JD Brookhart told us this week, he said, you know, last couple of weeks, uh, at Buffalo and at Syracuse, this Akron football team, there, there's some things that have started to come together and look good for a football team that's been decimated with injury. And I think decimated would be a, as an understatement when you've got guys who are who are starters out for the entire year not just for chunks of games but for the entire season it, it really shuffles your, 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 your lineup. On third and four that throw that would have been six is dropped by Reed Cunningham. Well Demarcus Grady had Reed Cunningham standing all by himself and 
Well, that tight end was so all by himself that he wasn't able to reel in the football. He was too open on this one. I think he took. When you're that wide open, you still got to concentrate on it. Maybe lost concentration. Goes up with one hand. Go up with two hands, big fella. Bring that football in. So two trips to the red zone now, and uh, here's uh, Mike Salerno again. Salerno had his first attempt blocked. This will be from 22 yards away, pretty much like an extra point. Mike Salerno is straight and true to get Northern Illinois on the board. So the Huskies with a couple of trips to the red zone, but uh, Reed Cunningham wishes he had that DeMarcus Grady throw back a moment ago. Cunningham couldn't reel it in. Northern Illinois settles for three. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. Uh, as depicting of the day, uh, the ghosts are out as Northern Illinois with a 3-0 uh, lead on Akron. Uh, I want to remind you, celebrating its fifth year sponsored the Good Hands Field Goal, and that's all state makes contributions to participating universities. General scholarship funds for each field goal, an extra point kick. Now, to date, all state has contributed more than $1.9 million in scholarship money. Michael Regga alongside Doug Chapman, great to have you with us for this uh, Saturday, Halloween Saturday. Happy Halloween to all of you. Hope the trick or treat will go uh, well tonight. Make sure you take care of all the uh, the kids on this final Saturday in the month of October. Akron went three and out a moment ago, and they're going to get their hands on the football. Deshaun Miller and De Jaleel Carter are back, and Deshaun Miller, the Mac East. Special team player of the week, 191 yards of returns a week ago. So Northern will stay away from Miller, and this is Jaleel Carter. Carter in trouble with a flag down, second, third flag down, and that one's going to come back as Carter worked his way over the 25 yard line, but that's coming back as we'll hear from Stan Evans, the referee. Enough laundry down there, huh? Man, yeah. Make your own Halloween costume out of all that. <laughs> During the return, illegal pushing it back on the return team number 20, number 15. The foul penalized half the distance, first down. Oh, Stan Evans working the microphone today, the veteran uh, Mid American Conference referee. And JD Brookhart saw his special teams blocking the back maybe two or three times here. And with the struggles they've had offensively, you, you want to eliminate that. In Got a freshman quarterback, you're giving them a longer field to work with, but you love the effort of your special teams guys, but just try to try to be a little smarter about it. So Patrick nicely again, and he was nice last week. This young man from Willoughby South High School, highly rated quarterback at Ohio, went 16 to 25 at Syracuse a week ago. This is Broderick Alexander. Now there's a true freshman out of Covington, Georgia. They took the red shirt off of uh, that young man right there, uh, Broderick Alexander. 16 touchdowns uh, as a senior, so they burned the red shirt today. N no DeVoe Torrance. Torrance, uh, their starting tailback, back banged up. Uh, had a uh, touch of uh, the flu this week, didn't make the trip. And Broderick Alexander again on the call, but he got uh, belted to the ground as that hit out of the secondary came from Mike Sobel. There's Sobel, the 200 pound free safety for Northern Illinois. In the last two plays, they walked Sobel down at the, right before the snap into the box and gone with a single high safety. So they, they're, they're preparing for the run but for, for versus Akron. I want to see nicely sit back, give a little play action, and go deep and test the secondary. But great job by Sobel stopping the run on that play. And this uh, front seven for Northern uh, Illinois is very stingy. So Robert Alexander with eight yards on a couple of carries, and this is third and two. Third straight carry, Alexander trying to battle his way to that 20 yard line. It's going to be very close, and it'll depend on the spot. He was following the blocks of uh, the, uh, the center, Elliot Bates. The senior and left guard Mike Ward, the 310 pounder. It's going to be a bit short. I'm going to wonder if they're going to they're going to kick this one. Maybe the length of the football, huh? Just just barely, but they're going to they're going to play it safe and punt this one away. Oh, good look at J.D. Brookhart played his college football at Colorado State. J.D. along with uh, Doug Martin at Kent State, the uh, two 
longest tenure at football coaches in the back, both of them in their sixth year. Again, uh, that rugby style boot. Got to get out of there this time as uh, you know, we saw Tommy Davis pick the football up on a hop. And that last uh, punt return that was Beth called Campbell, back. Zero yards on the return. So Northern Illinois will uh, have the football as uh, they gather offensively at the 30 yard line. Let's take a look at our marathon fast stats. And uh, Doug, you're talking plays here. A uh, pair of possessions that have gone to the red zone, but only netted three points for Northern Illinois, while Akron with a pair of three and outs. You, know, you run the ball and you run it as effectively as Northern. You have these longer drives, sustained drives, and eventually end up with more plays. Nicely, and, and Akron have not been on the field a lot enough to get a long drive going. And, but defensively, Akron's done a good job stopping Northern once they've gotten in scoring range. Chad Spann at the tailback spot, and he's got the first carry of this third possession of the opening quarter that is now inside 30 seconds left. And uh, Spann uh, got back to the line of scrimmage is all. We'll see if that's the final play of quarter number one, although now the uh, referee, Stan Evans, has stopped the clock momentarily. For what, I am not sure after that running play. After the play, unnecessary roughness, dead ball, personal foul on the offense, number 81. 15-yard penalty, the play counts, the down is second down. Did you see a flag come up? I didn't see a flag. Or did I? And I, I was looking at on the field for anything, and, and from the body language of, of Sewell from Akron, I thought it was on him. But uh, I, Nathan I, Palmer was the uh, yeah. guilty party, the wide receiver for Northern Illinois. I'm not sure exactly what he, what he did out there. Maybe, maybe he said something. A lot of time, the refs now are cracking down on the, on the chatter on the field now. If they hear something that's, you know, that, that, that's, that's not kosher, they're going to call a penalty on it. Let's see if they get a snap off with five seconds left and the clock running as this quarter winds down. And uh, DeMarcus Grady took a look and said, no need to. All right, 15 minutes in the books. Northern Illinois with two trips to the red zone, but only uh, the Mike Salerno 22-yard field goal to show for it. Second quarter coming up, Northern Illinois with a 3 0 lead. Come on back to DeKalb with us. I emailed. To thousands of local jobs. All right, 15 minutes of football in the books as you look at Akron head coach J.D. Brookhart's football teams uh, only had the football twice and had a couple of three and outs. So Northern Illinois has uh, had it three times. They've uh, been to the red zone twice and uh, have the three nothing lead. Happy Halloween, everybody. Hope you're enjoying it. We're toasty up here in the booth because my partner closed the window on <laughs> Michael Ray and Doug Chapman. Happy Halloween, everybody. Uh, what? Did, uh, how much did you used to wear on the field uh, when it got below 40 degrees? The philosophy is this: is if you're not playing, you don't need to be oh. that cold. <laughs> I, I didn't wear sleeves. I never wore anything on the field, but I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm in a suit today. Cut me some slack, you know. I'm not, we're not playing, so. I'm a defensive guy, so you know which one's tougher. Offense, defense, as we get set to start quarter number two. DeMarcus Grady will uh, fire the out route, and uh, it is caught. You see that flag flying late as uh, Grady was able to uh, hit that throw to Landon Cox. But uh, we'll see. That flag came out of the secondary from the back judge. So we'll wait and see where uh, Stan Evans is going with it. Busy man, huh? Stan Evans, first quarter. Arms getting a workout, isn't it? So is the microphone. <laughs> Holding. Offense, number seven. Ten yard penalty. Replay, second down. So uh, that throw to Landon Cox is going to be negated and uh, it's going to remain second down. But uh, Akron's defense is hung in, Doug. I mean, given the fact time of possession and the amount of plays run better than three to one from Northern Illinois in the first quarter. They've done a good job and Northern has really not really done too much on offense. They've run the ball decent, but they have not gotten the ball downfield in the passing game and they haven't really gotten any big plays on offense to 
to try to test that defense. Now Grady being chased out of the shotgun and he had to throw that football away. There's a lot of pressure on Demarcus Grady from Elmondo Sewell. Sewell with that heavy heat and forced Grady to get rid of the football before he wanted to. And, and that's what they've got to do. They've got to pressure Grady. You know, the, the offensive line of Northern Illinois is very good, but Grady has not been tested as a passer. That's why they've thrown a lot of passes, the little screens to the receivers. They've yet to really try to set him up and go downfield. But if they get pressure in his face, don't let him get comfortable. Don't let him set up. They can have success on defense at Akron can. Partner, you are uh, speaking the truth when you say this offensive line for Northern Illinois is very, very good. Uh, Eddie Adamski, the center, the ringleader of it. Well, they uh, chaperone the, uh, the best run game in the Mid-American Conference. Now on that late pitch on the option left, Chad Spann will uh, get taken down at the 17-yard uh, the line as, again, El Mondo Sewell. So that's back-to-back -back plays for the big junior out of Trenton, New Jersey. Heat on DeMarcus Grady and now chasing down Spann on the option. And you like to see active defensive linemen like that, guys that are they have their hand down the ground and they may be on the back side of a play, but when they see it's going away from them, they, they get up and they take off, run to the ball, good things happen. You see what happens when Sewell does it right there. Oh, Josh Wilbur now uh, standing at his own one yard line. And Wilbur will drill that to Jeremy Bruce. Oh, Bruce let that football go and now picked it up on a hop and is going to get buried at the 20 yard line. They'll say he was down at the 16. John Tranchatella, again, that special team demon making the uh, the initial hit that uh, put Bruce to the ground. And that just went bad for Bruce from the start. He misjudged it. He wanted to catch it on the first hop. The hop comes, it, it gets back, and then he's, he panics, grabs it, knee hits the ground. Just a rough <laughs> rough outing for Bruce on that punt return. Uh, Mac fans, make sure you check out the website at mac-sports.com and get the latest news and notes from around the conference set directly to your mobile device or email by following the Mac on Twitter at Mac Sports or by becoming a fan on Facebook. Check it out. Uh, Kenny Mather, the, uh, the outstanding uh, VP of Communications, and Jeremy Guy in the Mac office. They do a terrific job with uh, that Mac website at mac-sports.com. Patrick nicely with his first completion of the afternoon as he uh, hits the bubble screen to Jeremy Bruce. Bruce the 195 pound senior. So Doug again nicely now you're talking about the state of Ohio. He was the number one rated quarterback in the state of Ohio. Uh, probably the best passing quarterback at the Buckeye State last year and threw for over uh, 5,500 yards in his career at Willoughby South. Terrific program around the Cleveland area. And some good, very good football play in the state of Ohio. So those are tremendous accolades to come out of high school with. Nicely he'll check down and he came underneath and uh, the pass was caught nice again by Bruce. Bruce uh, was rattled by Alex Kuba. Kuba that hard hitting yeah, linebacker. Now here's our guys with the numbers Tommy Boshenik and Mike Pockta down in the truck. We were talking about this in our production meeting last night. There you are with your numbers on Patrick Nicely. But Doug remember again. J.D. Brookhart said uh, he was going to have a red shirt on all year and was the fourth quarterback coming into camp this year. Wasn't going to play him, and here he is having to fill the breach. And not just that, when you're that deep on the depth chart, you're usually running the opposing team's offense in practice. So he's really learning on the fly, Akron's offense. <laughs> I mean, and he started. On third and one, Broderick Alexander, this true freshman, another true freshman, as we said. The first uh, game he's played in, he had his red shirt taken off today, and he's very close to what would be an Akron first down, but he came up short. So it's going to be fourth and short again, and here comes the punt team on. Doug, they've run nine plays, and you see the uh, disappointment in the true freshman out of Georgia, Roderick Alexander. Because I'm, I'm sure as a running back, as a former running back myself, I know that he wanted to go for that. Short yardage, you want the ball, get in there, let your offensive line get man-to-man -man blocking move the pile but with the injuries that they've had on Akron there's just so many new faces and new places out there I don't think coach Brookhart and company know exactly what they have and have the trust right now to, to, to go for it on short yardage well, that clock is delay stopped game. for delay a game Offense, number eight, five -yard penalty. Well, the punter Zach Campbell who is uh, going to uh, unload his third punt here after the third third straight three and out for J.D. Brookhart's offense. And once again, uh, back in that uh, that deep spot in northern Illinois. 
Tommy Davis. Davis has done a, a very solid job for Jerry Kill's special teams on the punt returns. They went after it, did the Huskies. Davis says no way to a fair catch. He received that football in traffic and then got belted at the 40 yard line as Akron's special teams hit came from Mike Thomas. 3 0 Northern Illinois when we come back. Where do diehard Mac fans go for the latest in Mac news and information? Mac-sports.com, the official website of the Mid-American Conference. That's Mac. The 55 calories make it the lightest beer in the world. Back in Chile, DeKalb at Northern uh, Illinois University. That's Joe Novak. You talk a Husky legend. Yes, he is, and then some. What a fine football gentleman he is, the 13-year uh, head coach here at uh, the program in DeKalb and of course uh, we're, we're delighted to have a chance to talk to Joe Novak coming up at halftime. You'll also uh, get our uh, Marathon Max scoreboard. We'll take a look at what's going on on this Halloween Saturday and all the numbers and, and pictures too from a first half of football. Alongside Doug Chapman, I'm Michael Regai, and uh, <laughs> uh, Chapman, you think those fellows are going into Chicago tonight to, to hang out for trick or treat? <laughs> what do you think? With the beards down yeah, there? Why yeah, why not? Why not? This is Demarcus Grady. He's going to pull the football down, and then that throw had too much on it. He was looking to hit the seam Grady route to Perez play. Ashford, the true freshman. I'm impressed with Grady, Doug. Uh, the attributes, of course, uh, he's going to challenge a defense on the edge, but uh, you like his composure early on. I like his composure. I just want to see him just settle down in the passing game. He has a wide open receiver. They. They, they, they kind of give a little bit of a run look run him towards the line of scrimmage maybe a run pass option he throws it just put a little touch on that football and like I said he's he's still new you know he's still getting his feet wet as a quarterback so once he gets those little small things worked out he's gonna have a great he's gonna have a few great games here three wide receivers now at second and ten motion and that speed reverse to Miko Brown but Akron did oh, not bite. Well, they stayed home playing assignment football, uh, the Akron Zips, and there's yeah, Elmondo the Sewell again. With well, Sewell has been depth. active. 280 pound junior. He's been a force uh, in this front seven for Akron today. Sewell has, and Brian Wagner, another one. He was over there in that pile, and I'm extremely impressed with, you know, given all the injuries that Akron has had and all of the shuffling and jumbling around of players, I'm extremely impressed with the way they're playing today defensively and running to the football, getting to the ball, and, and really preventing big plays and not giving Grady time in the pocket. Very impressed with Akron right now. Well, Mondo Sewell, one of the top tacklers on this squad, and uh, as we were saying, J.D. Brookhart pleased with the work. Grady's throw incomplete, and he had pressure coming as uh, that heat came. And Grady's throw was incomplete on third down and 10. And he wanted to hit Willie Clark on the comeback route, but he had too much pressure in his face. He has to let the football go before Clark is even out of his break. And you see, like, Matt Little, linebacker, got to him a little early, throws the football before he, Clark's out of his break, puts him down, forced to punt now. Oh, Josh Wilbur will uh, have to hit it away again to Andre Jones, Mr. Versatile for this Akron football team with the wind at his back. Jones from the 12. And he is taken down on that special teams hit from Northern Illinois that came from Mike Sobel, the free safety. So Andre Jones not able to get started. 3-0 Northern Illinois. Stand on our own, proud to be homegrown. A familiar. All season long, Champion Apparel will be showcasing the tradition and history of the Mid American Conference. Joe Novak was head coach here at Northern Illinois for a span of 12 years, from 1995 to 2007. He accepted the challenge of transforming the fortunate culture of this Northern Illinois program. Now, during the 2003 season, Novak and the Huskies defeated three BCS teams, 13th ranked Maryland, Alabama and Tuscaloosa, and Iowa State. Huskies ranked as high as number 14 in the USA Today poll. 
Joe Novak led the Huskies in 2004 to a 9-3 record. He compiled a 53-30 mark, ranking Northern with a 25th best record in the nation. Champion, it's how you play. I've got to tell you, I love Joe Novak from Mentor, Ohio, uh, just east of Cleveland, and uh, a, a huge uh, Cleveland sports fan. And there you see some of the accolades, uh, four MAC West titles, 73 all MAC selections here. And Joe Novak will uh, join us at halftime and uh, played uh, his football for the Miami Red Hawks. As this is Broderick Alexander. This true freshman tailback, Alexander's got seven on that first down carry. I like the looks of this young man. I've been more importantly, J.D. Brookhart and his staff do too. You know, and that's what you have to have. You have, you have a freshman quarterback back there. You got to have a running back to take some some of the pressure off. Though just a freshman, but he has to get yards when they ask him to, and he's doing a good job picking up the yardage. I'm sure he wants the action today. All right, second down, and let's call it three from the 18. This is the. Fourth possession of the football game uh, for the Akron Zips looking for their first first down. Nicely is on time with that throw, and there's your first first down as he's got Andre Jones. Well, how versatile is Andre Jones, Doug? This is Mr. Versatility in the Mac. He started at three positions already in this 09 football season. Well, we just saw him returning the punt just in, in the previous play, and he returns the punt. He plays wide receiver. He played some corner this year. He's played safety in his career. And they'll even line him up at quarterback and run a little wildcat. The versatility is, is, is unquestioned. But you'd like to see that out of your head. The more you can do with a football player. Quality athlete nicely on first down. Look out. Sec time. Down he goes as uh, he was hit from the backside by Nabal Jefferson, the 270-pound true freshman, one of the true freshmen playing here for Jerry Kill. And you see nicely dropping back. He just holds the ball a bit too long. He scanned the field. No one's open. Dump it off to your running back. Let your running back pick up a few yards. Just a freshman. Great job by Jefferson getting back there, fighting through and getting pressure and getting the sack. But you got to get rid of that football, Mr. Nicely. For a loss of six. This Northern uh, Illinois squad only giving up 19 points per game. That second in the Mid-American Conference defensively, Central Michigan the stingiest, only allowing 50 in a game. Broderick Alexander on that reverse from his running back spot, and Alexander to the 29-yard line. So that's uh, that's good for 10, and uh, they got back the better part of uh, that that sack on second down. We're delighted you're a part of it with us today. Happy Halloween, everybody, on this uh, Halloween Saturday. Uh, I'm Michael Regai, alongside my partner, Doug Chapman. This uh, one and six Akron football squad looking for their first MAC win. Northern Illinois coming in today at four and three and two and one in the MAC West. Here at Husky Stadium in DeKalb on a third and six for Patrick Nicely. Nicely going to avoid pressure. Flag down, nicely's down as he got belted on delivery. As uh, that shot came from Corey Hansen, the hard hitting 50 year senior linebacker. You see, he drops back. I'm wondering what the flag is, maybe a little holding, but no one's open downfield. Nicely looking for someone to throw the ball to. Can't get any, has pressure in his face, throws it away. So the call was holding uh, that you did not hear, maybe a malfunction in uh, Stan Evans' microphone as Patrick Nicely uh, was feeling that pressure from the hard charging Corey Hansen, the senior linebacker out of Minneapolis. Oh, Akron to kick it away again. Zach Campbell to boot it away. A pair awaited for Northern Illinois. Tommy Davis and this is Perez Ashford from the 33 and Ashford could not shake free of that uh, that tackle as Akron special teams work was able to uh, put down Perez Ashford as the stop came from a Tyler Campbell the junior defensive back out of Pickerington North High School around the Columbus area. So back to the offense comes uh, DeMarcus Grady. And if you're just joining us again, 
No Chandler Harnish again today uh, as he's missing his second straight. Harnish was hurt in that uh, 20 to 19 loss at Toledo a couple of weeks ago. Back to that running game, that most potent running game. Look at the, the hard running of uh, tailback Chad Spann. Spann again out of Indianapolis. So Doug, both Span and uh, Miko Brown both average better than five yards a tote, and it's why close to 200 yards a game, a buck 96 yeah, per for the, the best rushing team in the MAC, the Northern Illinois Huskies. Best rushing team, that, and it starts with that offensive line. We looked at it earlier, Eddie Adamski and that offensive line up front. They've, the, these guys have started all year. When you have that type of consistency in the offensive line, guys not shuffling in and out, you get big games, you get good protection of your quarterback. You, Get two running backs that are successful back there. Chad Span through a big hole on the left side, and uh, Span will roll very close to the first down sticks. Jason uh, Anye Buaga. Buaga wears number 65. He's the left guard, and uh, he opened up that big hole. He and Trevor Olson, that third year sophomore left tackle. There's big Jason Anye Buaga, the senior. He and Eddie Adamski, number 50, right next to him. Those are the two big road graders that really get it done up front. They're dominant at the point of attack. Dominant, they're big, they're strong, they're very physical, and you have to be physical to run the football. Chad Spann, first down and more as he's got the edge, and Spann with that uh, strong run outside the numbers, inside the 40, and down near the 37-yard line. That's 19 yards and a first down. Biggest run of the day for Chad Spann. And it's 19 yards in a hurry. Watch the offensive line come off the ball. Good blocking on the outside. Good blocking by the receivers, and Spann just sees the crease, gets upfield north and south, and just like that, 19 quick yard span. Not only a good short yardage back, but has the ability to pop the long runs. Well, Chad Spann, after that 19-yard tote on nine carries for 69 yards, here's carry number 10, and Spann will come free. He's into that second level, down to the 25-yard line. So 19, Doug, then 11. As we said, this offensive line can really get it blocked. And Akron had done, up until this point, a, a pretty good job with keeping Northern Illinois at bay in the running attack. But that's what a great offensive line does, is they wear down the defensive line. And you've got backs like Spann and Miko Brown gets in there. Two talented running backs coming at you. Something's going to give. So there's the numbers for Chad Spann. We said he averages 5.3, better than that today at 8. Marcus Grady uh, searching the red zone again. Elmondo Sewell, though, uh, got some help from Hassan Hazimi as uh, the defensive tackle and the defensive end for Akron just wrapped up Chad Span. Only got a couple there. Only got a couple, but that's what the running game is. You have to be patient. You're going to get one. You're going to get two. You're going to get one. And like you saw, he pops off 19 and 10 here. But if you stay with it and something that Northern has done here for a long time, Stuck with the running game, you're going to have success with. All right, second down and eight. Three wide receivers now for Demarcus Grady. Let's see if he puts it up here. Grady off that play fake will keep the football and he'll follow the blocks of Eddie Adamski. And he's got a first down inside the 15 down to the 12. That's 10 more yards on the ground. And again, Grady got 55 yards on 10 totes last week at uh, Miami. And they run the little option read. He looks at the defensive end. The defensive end plays upfield. Grady does a great job following the running back. We fake the football too. North and South gets through the hole first down. And look at their play selection. Eight passes. They've thrown eight times, 25 runs. That's their bread and butter here is running the football. The quarterback does it. Span does it. Miko Brown does it. They all get, get a chance to run it back here. And it looks like they're running downhill on this possession. Now off that play fake, Demarcus Grady uh, got swallowed up. Swallowed up, maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. But uh, we've been impressed with that, uh, that Akron uh, front three and uh, their front seven as uh, getting off the bottom of that pile is uh, Dan uh, Marcoux. You know, I like the creativity in, in Northern Illinois with the misdirection and sending the guys in motion. But when you're, you're inside the 20-yard yard, you're inside the almost at the 10-yard line. You've been running the ball that well. Get north and south behind Adamski, Joe Pollock, Omya Bwaugu. Run behind those guys. Who? Run behind those guys. Anye Buwaga. Say it with me. Anye Buwaga. Anye Bu, like Halloween. Buwaga. Aga. And there run you behind Anye, Anye Buwaga. Get yeah. behind him. Stop running outside, <laughs> north and south. 
run behind the guys that got you down here. I like the creativity, but keep it. Don't get fed. There he is. See, from he that's why have, I pointed him out to he you must a couple plays ago. He must have just heard me mispronounce his name. He's laughing at me. So I apologize, man. He's a lot bigger than I am, so I apologize, Mr. Yeah, Adie Buaga. Jason Adie Buaga, all 310 pounds of him. Very affable uh, left guard. And uh, again, he and Eddie Adamski, they're the ringleaders, the seniors. They play with uh, three sophomores on that O line. And that play clock was running down to one now on what is going to be a third down and eight with the line to make down near the three yard line. And head coach Jerry Kill, the uh, second year head coach, who replaced Joe Novak in this Northern uh, Illinois program. Looking over that play chart. All right, we'll take this time out with Jerry Kill and his Huskies, and we'll be right back to check out play selection. That's a look at it from field turf level here at Husky Stadium on this Halloween Saturday. Uh, Three twelve left in this opening half. J.D. Brookhart, sixth-year head coach of the Akron Zips. He's seen his defense uh, come up with a, a couple of uh, uh, stops preventing touchdowns and this is the third time now that Northern Illinois in the first half has uh, gone to the red zone. They've left points on the board and it's going to bring up a third and eight for Demarcus Grady who has replaced uh, the injured Chandler Harnish uh, at quarterback his second straight start. So let's see what Jerry Kill dials up on third and eight with Span in the one back. Play action Grady. In trouble and down he goes. Look at the Akron Zips swarm on Demarcus Grady. Wayne Cobham on a safety blitz who wears number 27. Well, Long uh, made one of those hits. There's Cobham. Watch him. And you see Grady, they go play action. He turns around and there's nowhere to go with it. He looks downfield. There's no receivers that have gotten open, and all he sees is white jerseys. A host of Akron defenders get to him. Great play led by Wayne Cobham. Great play by Akron defensively. Like I said, they've played great bend, but do not break defense, and they've played well on third down so far, and they've kept Northern out of the end zone. Out of Pembroke Pines, Florida, and Jerry Kill now staring at fourth and 18 after that sack of Demarcus Grady. And we mentioned Chandler Harnish, Doug, and what they've all lost in Harnish. And they're hoping he did some work this week, and they're hoping to get him back. Uh, their starting quarterback, of course, uh, started the first six, and uh, you know an impressive 64 percent uh, accuracy, 64 uh, percent uh, completion percentage for a Harnish is missing uh, from this offense. Yeah, Chandler Harnish is, is definitely the better of the two passers between him and, and Demarcus Grady, but. You know, DeMarcus Grady is capable. He's very, very mobile. I'm sure they want Harnish back there when it comes to throwing the football. Mike Salerno with that breeze behind him will bang that through the uh, the uprights. From 37 yards away, Mike Salerno with his second field goal make of the afternoon. But this Akron defense has really gotten themselves uh, very, very energized in the red zone. What they've done is they've made plays when they have to. You know, Northern has done a good job moving the football up and down the field, but Akron has done an even better job keeping them out of the end zone. And, and they've left it now to where they get the ball back to their offense, and their offense has a chance if they score, they're, they've tied up or they're back on top in this football game. So great job, Akron, defensively this afternoon. Yeah, J.D. Brookhart, as we said, uh, you know, there they are. Uh, they've been good. They're, they're fifth in the MAC in, uh, in total defense, uh, allowed 150 today in the first half. But in our conversations with J.D. Brookhart this week, he's told us he is absolutely thrilled. This group is a strong group emotionally because they've rallied uh, given uh, some of the uh, some of the uh, the pitfalls to, uh, you, you know you lose your starting quarterback uh, uh, suspended and uh, dismissed from the football team was Chris Jackamane the leader of this football team and Brookhart's been very pleased the way that uh, his kids have rallied to the cause here. Now Jalil Carter on the run from the 25 yard line on this accurate kick return. And nice operating position. That's a 12 yard return for Jalil Carter. They kept it away from Deshaun Miller. 
So, Doug, here you go. And, and what's that like? I mean, Chris Jackamain, leader of this football team, had to be suspended, ultimately dismissed from the football team a couple weeks in. When you lose your starting quarterback and, and it happens suddenly, he played, and then all of a sudden at, at, at the third game he's out, it kind of throws your team for a loop. And then when you're... Your backup gets in there. He plays well. Then he goes down with a with a big time knee injury. It really throws you out of sync offensively. But nicely has done a good job coming in and filling in so far. And so has Broderick Alexander. That's 11 yards and a first down on that quick option pitch from Patrick Nicely. Again, uh, Devoe Torrance, uh, the redshirt freshman, the starting tailback, left home. We have not seen either Alex Allen or uh, Joe Tuzzi today. Uh, and Broderick Alexander, true freshman. First playing time in his career at Akron. Well, he's a guy they wanted to shirt. A lot of talent. They wanted to keep him here and, and, and kind of race her this year, keep him in the mix for a while. But injuries and, and, and certain situations have caused it now to where he's been called into action. He's, done, he's doing a good job. Yeah, he's done a very solid job, but he's offset next to Patrick Nicely after that 11 yard run. Nicely timing route, and that throw is on time and caught as he hooked up with wide receiver Jeremy LaFrance, the 200 pound junior. Well, nicely, it uh, looks the part, doesn't he? Doug passes the eye test at 6'4", 225. He looks good and he throws. Look at him deliver a strike right here to LaFrance. Great play. Stands tall in the pocket. Has a great release. You know, nicely, he's a good-looking quarterback. He's just young, and playing time is going to be his best friend right now. I go back to the run game, but Northern Illinois, they had that smelled out. Northern Illinois is a big defensive tackle. D.J. Perkle out of Frankfurt here in the... Uh, the state of Illinois made that hit on Broderick Alexander. Tempo now, though, Doug. Uh, Patrick Nicely and Akron picking up the tempo of the offense. They have to. Getting, under, getting close to a minute and a half left in the, in the first half. They've got to get some points on the board. And second and 11 as we hit 90 seconds left in the opening half right now. Plenty of time on the play clock as it hits 10 and Nicely changing things up. On second and 11, nicely looking middle. His throw is hauled in and caught by wide receiver Deshaun Miller, and that's a first down. Akron, well, Patrick nicely changing plays and hits Miller middle for 13 and the Zips first down. You know, you see nicely come up to the line and, and change the play, maybe change the protection also, the blocking protection. When you have your, your freshman quarterback, you'd like to see that him making adjustments at the line, which means he really has a command of the offense, delivers a good strike to Miller. Nice looking drive so far for Nicely. Now from the 21 yard line, so banging on the door of the red zone. Northern Illinois showing blitz. Nicely will fire end zone. It was batted down in the back of the end zone. He wanted Andre Jones, and it was uh, knocked down by Kyrie Daniels, the 193-pound junior, back of the end zone. First of all, good protection by the offensive line for Akron, protecting nicely. And nicely, even though it comes up with an incompletion, he pushed the ball to where only his receiver could really get to that one. Jones couldn't get it, but they lived to fight another down. Four wides now for Patrick Nicely. Second and 10 with 47 seconds left. Nicely will trigger that throw and had too much on it. You saw the reaction uh, from uh, wide receiver Jeremy LaFrance. LaFrance was uh, being, uh, being covered by uh, Chris Smith, and he thought maybe that uh, Smith was jostling too much. May have been jostling. Maybe LaFrance was a little frustrated with himself, slipped a bit in his break, trying to get back to that football. And I think he knows right now they need points badly right now. All right, third down and 10. This crowd's coming up now. Still 43 seconds left. But Nicely's got to hit something here. Third and 10. He'll swing it out to Broderick Alexander and had too much on it. And that's a shame because if Alexander could have reeled that ball in, he had a nice amount of grass to work with in front of him. Would have put him up for an easier field goal. Maybe have broken a couple tackles and got to the end zone. But you know, good protection. Gets a bit of pressure in his face. But lets the ball go, lets it float a bit too high. They wish they could have that one back. All right, so we'll see Bronco Rogovich for the first time. This is uh, going to be from the left hash, and it'll be from 38 yards if successful. Rogovich, plenty of leg, and he pushed it wide left. 
So Bronco Rogovich looking to get Akron back to within three. He wasn't able to connect. Uh, Doug, that, that breeze is kind of a cross breeze today here at Husky Stadium, gusting up to about 25 miles per. It is. You can see the flags are kind of going crazy, but the, the wind's not really coming in from the top. It's kind of down field level and going across the field. So I'm sure it makes it difficult for these kickers, and I'm sure they wish they could have that one back. You see our uh, director Dave Taskin, all of our uh, terrific uh, camera crew showing you how that breeze is uh, functioning today. Demarcus Grady content with going to a knee, and that is going to be the final snap of a very quick paced first half. And Northern Illinois dominated it with uh, their ability as the number one ground game in the Mid American Conference. They went up and down four times. But was only able to put six on the board as Akron's defense got very, very stingy. So you take a look at uh, Chad Spann in that uh, final drive, had the big uh, first half with 85 yards on the ground as Spann did the bulk of the ball carrying in the last uh, couple of possessions. Miko Brown uh, with just 12 yards uh, here on eight totes of the football. So as uh, we await, Head coach Jerry Kilp of Northern Illinois. Uh, they will go to the locker room pondering uh, not being able to get the football in the end zone on their trips to the red zone, something they've been uh, most proficient at. Steve, you have to take your hats off to Akron, doing a great job defensively from stopping them so far in this, in this football game. All right, we're pleased to be joined by the second-year head coach of Northern Illinois, Jerry Kill, Jerry Michael Rega, and Doug Chapman. Uh, your ground game again, uh, very solid, Jerry. But in the red zone, you've had some breakdowns here in the opening half. Yeah, you know the the big, the toughest thing is we had a wide open tight end and, and we didn't get it on him. You know that was a a, a huge uh, a huge mistake on our part. You have a guy that wide wide open, you got to make that play. Coach, I see you said you said the tight end was wide open. You got to make that play. You're gonna guys gonna try to air it out a little bit more in the second half. Try to catch Akron off balance defensively. Yeah, I, I think we've got to do some things. We got a very very strong win down here, and we got a rookie quarterback. So you know we got to be careful, but we're gonna have to. You know they're up in the line of scrimmage, and we're gonna have to take a couple shots. Yeah, we've been very impressed by the way with Demarcus Grady, Jerry. Thanks so much. Good luck in the second half. You bet. Thank you. That's Thank you. Jerry Kill, second year uh, head coach here at Northern Illinois. Couple of field goals from Mike Salerno. That's all business being done on the scoreboard. 6-0 Northern Illinois. Hey, Vincent. Go State. Hey, Ham. Why did that guy call you Vincent? Because that's my real name, Bergwood. It is? How do you know that? He's my Allstate agent. Oh, he insures your car. And my boat. It's a glorious uh, Halloween football Saturday at Northern Illinois University. Uh, 30 minutes of football in the books. A couple of Mike Salerno field goals. Have uh, Jerry Kill and the Huskies on top over Akron. 6 0. Uh, speaking of uh, Huskies and football legend, we are very delighted to be joined by one of the true legends of Mid American Conference uh, coaching, Joe Novak, 13 years on the sideline uh, here in DeKalb. Joe, Great to see you. You were honored today. Had to be a, a special feeling. We, we showed it uh, as you were down on the football field. How many memories going through your mind as you uh, get back on the turf here at Husky Stadium? It's hard to count them all, Mike. We had a great time here. We really did. I, I was here for four years with Bill Mallory in the early 80s as an assistant. And to come back here as a head coach for 12 years was just a great experience. A lot of great wins. Some tough losses, too. You know how that goes. But we had a great time. Great time indeed. And, uh, you know, Joe, we were talking about in the first half, you had to change the culture and change the atmosphere a little bit here. Um, a rough time in the first couple of seasons, but when you got it squared away, I think back to 03 and 04 and, and the wins over, uh, over Maryland and Alabama, Iowa State when they were ranked, might that be the, the period of time that you, you felt that uh, all the fruits of the labor for you and the coaching staff really came together? I don't think there's any doubt about it, Mike. That was a great period. That was a great period for the whole league. We had some other great victories by other teams that year, so that was a special time. And, and you know, it can happen again, but you know, the, I, I thank the athletic director, Kerry Groth, who was inducted in the Hall of Fame last night, and that's why I'm here. That uh, she stuck with us through the tough times, and they were tough, but we got things straightened out and had a great period there. 
Joe, we talk about running the football here, and, uh, you know, you did it better than anybody in this nation. We, we've brought up all the uh, the football bowl subdivision programs, but uh, when you look at Garrett Wolf and Michael Turner and uh, all of the outstanding backs you've had here, what kind of commitment does it take from a program to run the football as effectively as you've done here at Northern Illinois? Well, you know, part of it is the weather factor here, in, in, you know, outside Chicago. The wind's blowing, it gets cold. And, you know, you can't always count on having great passing weather. So we really felt in order to be competitive and consistent, we needed to run the football. So that's the way we came in from day one. The guys I work for, Bill Mallory, that's the way Bill always believed to do it. And we did it. We were fortunate to get the Garrett Wolves, the Mike Turners, the Thomas Hammocks. We had some great running backs, and we had some great offensive linemen too, Mike. Oh, you no question about that. And, you know, I, I was thinking about you talking to Jerry Kill this week. And uh, uh, as you've retired, he is, uh, has it pro this program in, in wonderful stead. How impressed are you, by the way, that uh, Coach Kill has come in here and carried on the tradition that, uh, that you had going on for a, a 12 years. Well, very, very impressed with Jerry. You know, I was a part of the process. Jim Phillips hired Jerry, but he let me sit in on the interviews, and I knew Jerry from competing against him and, and just thought the world of him as a person, as a coach. He believed kind of like we did, the hard-nosed approach, running the football, and I just knew he'd be a great, great person to take this program, and I think he's a wonderful hire for Northern. Joe, delighted to have uh, followed you and your programs for so many years. Thanks so much for taking the time. All the best. North Carolina now in the warmth, huh? North Carolina, you bet. Going home tomorrow. <laughs> all right, Joe Novak, everybody, one of the most successful head football coaches in all of football bowl subdivision play. We'll be right back. Northern Illinois on top 6 nothing. Proud to stand on our own. Proud to be home. Saturday of Mac football. Presented by Marathon. A couple of Mike Salerno field goals as Northern Illinois on top of Akron uh, 6 0. All right, let's take a look at our Mac scoreboard brought to you by Marathon. Their proud sponsor of the 2009 Marathon Mac Football Championship, December 4th at Ford Field in Detroit. Ohio uh, trying to bounce back from that home loss to Kent State on the road at uh, Schumann Stadium and on top of Ball State 9 7 at halftime. Last week, uh, McQuell Lewis and Corey Sykes combined for over 500 yards of running ground game uh, in their win over Eastern Michigan. So, And Western Michigan and Kent State uh, will tangle at Dick Stadium. Uh, they start uh, in about 15 minutes from right now. Let's take a look at our Mary American Family Insurance Max standings on the west side. Central Michigan, they've won seven in a row after their season opening loss. 5-0, and oh, they step out of conference play. Good one today as they go to Chestnut Hill, Mass to take a look at uh, Boston College. And a Central Michigan win will probably put them in the top 25 around the football bowl subdivision. Northern Illinois here can keep pace. They still have an opportunity uh, themselves to get Central as they'll play them in the month of uh, November. Western Michigan looking to go to 4-2 and two today. And uh, our American Family Insurance Mac East Division standings or Temple. Al Golden's football team superb. Uh, Doug and I saw them last Saturday night as they beat Toledo in the glass bowl on the road. They've won five in a row and a perfect 4-0 in the MAC. But Kent State and Ohio both right there at Kent State off that big win over Ohio last week uh, down at Peden Stadium in Athens. 6-0 Northern Illinois at halftime. Come on back with more here on ESPN+. Plus. It's a Halloween Saturday, and uh, that gentleman is uh, right for the occasion. 6 nothing, Northern Illinois on top of Akron. Let's go downstairs. We are uh, joined by the uh, the head coach of the University of Akron, J.D. Brookhart. J.D., Michael Regat, Doug Chapman, you got to be thrilled that your defense in the red zone three times uh, came away with stops. Uh, what's the message at halftime to the kids, J.D.? Well, you know, I, I think just to hold steady right now, uh, offensively, the third and shorts that we uh, didn't convert, obviously put our defense in, in, uh, out on the field way too much. So we've got to convert those. You know, we can either move the ball. we got to be consistent, give our quarterback a chance to succeed. we got to go make some plays. And we've seen a few flashes from Nicely at quarterback when he's gotten protection. Are you going to try to go to go downfield a little more and 
try to give him some more opportunities well, in the yeah, passing I, game? You know, I think so, and that's the plan. We put ourselves in you know, trying to get a first down and have some opportunities to do that. Haven't been able to do it and just been inconsistent uh, converting some things. So that's what we're going to clean up. And, uh, yeah, certainly uh, Patrick uh, has the ability to do some good things in the passing game. J.D., real quick, he took the shirt off Broderick Alexander. Doug and I were saying we really like him. It looks like the young man has got a good feel at that tailback. Yeah, spot. you know, he's a smart young man, very disciplined in what he does. He's a tough kid, and that's kind of what we're banking on right now. I think he's doing a decent job. Appreciate it, J.D. Good luck in the Thanks, second Michael. half. J.D. Brookhart, head football coach. He's got Patrick Nicely, this true freshman from Willoughby, Ohio, ready to go. Second half is next. Back football on ESPN Plus presented by the good folks at Marathon Husky Stadium here in DeKalb. Well, you take a look at Deshaun Miller right there. He took one back to the house. 98 yard kickoff return against Syracuse at the Carrier Dome last week. Uh, for that, he earned Mac East Special Team Player of the Week honors. And you see again Mike Salerno keeping the football away from Miller as this is uh, Jalil Carter on the return. So Carter to the 28 yard line Doug when you, a kickoff returner has a dynamic day like um, like Deshaun Miller had last week Jerry kill hadn't kicked the football anywhere near him today now that's good coaching you, you know what that young man did with the football in his hands on kick returns last week so don't give him the chance to do that against your team so so definitely kick the ball away from him. true freshman 6'4 220 pounds strong armed uh, Patrick nicely out of Willoughby South High School in uh, the Cleveland area back uh, all of you uh, watching on WEWS uh, TV 5 in Cleveland you know all about the high school exploits of Patrick nicely and he'll get the football on the first call of the second half to his true freshman uh, mate Roderick Alexander who gets stopped after a short game missed opportunities Doug for uh, Northern Illinois first half missed opportunities for points they get a field goal blocked here and then right here wide open you can't ask for anything better puts the ball directly on him he drops it goes up with one hand those are points that they left on the field that's why this is a six nothing ball game now yeah, 50 year senior Reed Cunningham not able to hold that in nicely is going to throw that fade route up the sideline and it was caught out of bounds as Jeremy LaFrance made the catch and now We've got a late flag that just came out on Mike Sobel, the free safety, evidently. And they're going to they're going to call it a late hit on him. Ed Steenberg, in the line judge, chatting with our referee today, Stan Evans, as five of the uh, the seven of the officiating crew get together and discuss it. Ed Steenberg and the linesman threw it. Field judge uh, George Plezak also on the conversation. The ball is caught, what, three, four yards out of bounds, and that Sobel uh, pushed him. Dead ball on freshman, or dead ball, unnecessary roughness on the defense. Hitting a player out of bounds, 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. All right, so it happened uh, in front of the Akron bench. Mike Sobel, who uh, shoved Jeremy LaFrance, got got hit for that uh, that 15-yard major foul. And, and, and Sobel was just playing football. He lost track of where he was in the field. But by the rules, that's a late hit. You, you, you hit a guy out of bounds like that, they're going to throw a flag. I don't think any any malice was meant by Sobel. He was just playing ball, and he lost track of where he was. A big penalty on Mike Sobel and the Northern Illinois defense. First to 10 for the 43. This is Broderick Alexander, and he got stood up and belted. That's a loss of a couple, as uh, you see uh, unpiling uh, off uh, those stacks. Brandon Bice from uh, McCook, Illinois, the 250-pound uh, redshirt senior, fifth-year guy. Where's number 56? He's a good one. He's a good one. You remember last year they had a young man by the name of Larry English on that defense. Oh, line. that was who special. Could, who could really, really go. So he's got, they've got big shoes to fill, but the defensive line, great job on that play, getting penetration and stopping the run. Bice uh, hit Alexander for a three-yard loss. It'll bring up second and 13 now. 
nicely to go upstairs. And that throw is caught by a wide open Andre Jones. That's a bust in the Northern Illinois secondary. No way Andre Jones should be standing free like that, Doug Chapman. That's a big time bust when you see a wide receiver that open. It's just, he was waiting for that ball to come to him. Good job protection wise by Akron. And good job Jones just getting open, catching the ball and picking up the first down for his offense. I try to pick up the tempo again, uh, back to the run game, and that's Broderick Alexander oh, wiggling Alexander. his way for a couple. Uh, give him uh, two, and we'll call it second down and eight. Tackle and we Hanson. noticed after uh, the few completions that Patrick Nicely has picked up today, to move the sticks for first down, Akron will uh, go quickly up to that line of scrimmage and try to get that first down playoff. And they pick up when they pick up big chunks of yardage, they try to pick the tempo up, to try to catch Northern on their heels, and so far it's worked. Nicely now at the 37-yard line. Gunning the out. He's got Andre Jones with a move. Jones inside the 20 down to the 17-yard line. That's 20 yards and a first down on the, uh, the quick out from Patrick Nicely to Andre Jones. And Jones is very, very dangerous. Runs to just a five-yard run. Stops, turns around, and you see the speed, but... Hey, right now, they're one score and an extra point from being in the lead in this football game. They should, they're a hungry offense right now. Broderick Alexander sifting his way through traffic, picked his way uh, down inside the 15, down near the 13-yard line. So that's a productive four yards on first down. That's why we ask uh, J.D. Brookhart about Broderick Alexander. The kid looks like, you know, first time he's ever stepped on a field as a collegiate. Looks like he's got something. Yeah, good size, 215 pounds, 6'2". Definitely looks the part, and he's definitely playing the part this afternoon. Uh, starting tailback, DeVoe Torrance, young man from uh, Canton, Ohio, Massillon High School. Not on the trip today because of, uh, because of uh, illness and injury. Flags fly now. As, uh, did that play clock hit zero, or was it a false start? Looks like a false start on Akron. Before the play, false start. 71, offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. Mike Ward, the 310-pound uh, the junior. There's uh, big Mike Ward, wears number 71. He, he's the best of the bunch, too. That's your, uh, that's your ringleader on that offensive line. Ward out of Fairfax, Virginia, for head coach J.D. Brookhart. Football back at the 17. Let's call it second and 10 now with three wide receivers to the bottom of your screen for Patrick Nicely. Blitz coming. Nicely will step up with a little bit of room before it caved in on him. Corey Hansen on that stop along with DJ Perkle. Perkle wears number 98, big 285 pound defensive tackle for Northern. See nicely pull it down. Deshaun Miller was streaking across on a crossing route. I'm not sure if he didn't get open, he didn't come open fast enough for nicely, or if that was a design quarterback draw. But either way, you see nicely, you know, he's not afraid to put it down and run it. Like I said, every, every play for him is a learning experience. He's a new quarterback, so he's definitely learning on the job today. All right, four wide receivers. This is the third and ten. The line to make is at the seven. Nicely. Look end zone. Andre Jones couldn't get there. Jones was uh, being covered by Kyrie Daniels, the junior cornerback. And this is just great coverage by Daniels. You see, nicely got protection again. Puts it up, goes for Jones. Just down the sideline, maybe a deeper fade, but too much on it. Great coverage by Northern Illinois. Well, once again, uh, for the second time, Bronco Rogovich. Rogovich will uh, go out of the... Uh, out of the hold of Zach Campbell. 34 yard field goal attempt, and this time he got it. He'll split the sticks. Bronco Rogovich from 34 yards out to get Akron on the board in this, what's turned out to be a defensive minded battle here at Husky Stadium. So J.D. Brookhart's football team moving the football, putting points on the board. Come on back with us. Proud to stand on our own. Proud to be home. At gone. 
with Michael Jackson's thriller blaring over the uh, loudspeakers here inside Husky Stadium. It's it's a Halloween Saturday. Happy trick or treat to all of you. As Patrick Nicely is uh, is on the uh, on the headset with uh, his offensive coordinators upstairs, uh, Walt Harris, the quarterback coach, and Shane Montgomery, the co-offensive coordinators. Harris, of course, coach at Pittsburgh. J.D. Brookhart was with him, and Shane Montgomery, the former head coach of the Miami Red Hawks, who uh, joined the staff at uh, at the University of Akron this year. So Bronco Rogovic has uh, cut the Northern Illinois lead in half as uh, you got a look a moment ago at Tommy Davis and Ricky Kreider. But Rogovic is going to leave this very short with Mike Sobel at the 30 yard line and Sobel will wedge out about eight nine yards on that return. Well let's check that it was 39 in, uh, instead of 38 Garrett Barnes on the kickoff return Sobel. Where's number 38? So Barnes gets the opportunity there for Northern Illinois, and we're delighted you are with us here as uh, we're about four minutes and some change into the third quarter. Michael Regga alongside Doug Chapman, our producer Greg Logan, director David Task, all of our terrific ESPN Plus crew. On a Halloween Saturday at Northern uh, Illinois University. Uh, Demarcus Grady. Back at the quarterback spot. He's going to go play action and fire the seam route. Oh, it was there for him as uh, he was uh, looking at wide receiver Landon Cox out of Calumet City. Doug, that was six if uh, Demarcus Grady put more air on. No, that was six, but that's that's the thing we talked about with Demarcus Grady is his ability to throw. He has the ability to throw the football. He just doesn't do it a lot. You see him drop back. Great protection. Great route by Cox. He's wide open. Just put the football on your receiver. Doesn't do it. They miss out on the big play. From East Grand Rapids High School to Marcus Grady, and he's going to uh, come uh, right back to Willie Clark. And he hit Clark on uh, that, that short out for five. Willie Clark, the third year sophomore out of uh, Roselle, Illinois. Now, East Grand Rapids High School, a, uh, a very strong football program. And a season ago, Grady played in six games as he backed up Chandler Harnish. Started the Miami game in 08, just as he did last week. Play action again. Grady drills that strike. That is caught. That's going to move the sticks. Willie Clark, he made that catch in traffic first down. You asked Jerry Kill about throwing the football a little bit more and kill said yep and right on time he's a man true to his word here in the second half and, and then you see Grady you know put that dart directly on Willie Clark in traffic he can throw the football it's just with this style of offense he's not asked to do it a lot so when he has to make the downfield touch passes they may sometimes you know go a bit astray but he puts a dart on Willie Clark right there to move the chains Jerry kill told us he was looking for decision making to be sound from Demarcus Grady wanted to get him up to game speed bubble screen and his throw is on time to wide out uh, Perez Ashford Ashford a touchdown maker last week at Miami the true freshman Jalil Carter that strong safety wears number two on the stop so going away from uh, the max leading ground game is Demarcus Grady going through the air on this drive oh yeah the, you know Akron's defense did a great job in the first half really just making plays when they had to but the tempo of Northern right now they're coming out doesn't really go into the ground game but they're moving the ball through the air pretty effectively I go back to the ground game and this is uh, Miko Brown and Miko Brown got stuffed well, that hit was made by Armando Sewell again. There's Sewell. What a terrific game he's had. Hey, Doug, Jerry Kill was telling us this week, he said, you know what he did? He went good on good or ones on ones with Demarcus Grady because he wants to get him up to speed against his first team defense to try to accelerate his progress. And that's the way you get a guy going is when you put him against your best out there and practice. You know, practice, sometimes people take it for granted and think it's a time to relax, but you're supposed to learn and practice, and there's no better way to learn than by going against your, your own team's ones. All right, third down and five. Grady play action. Grady now trying to challenge the edge. Does he get the corner? He did. Maybe about a yard shy of the first down sticks. 
He got pushed out of bounds by Brian Wagner along though four, with uh, yeah. Amin Kabir. Kabir, the 205 pound senior out of Warrensville, Ohio. You know, good job by Wagner running that play down. I think the fans are seeing where the ball was when he went out of bounds, but if his foot touched the white before that ball crossed the plane, good job by the referees on the spot getting him short of that first down. Oh, it's going to bring up fourth down and one. The line to make is just inside the 40. And Jerry Kill is going to uh, burn one of his three second half timeouts right here. So fourth and it's a full yard. The football rests just inside the 41. And Doug, the line to make uh, is just inside the 40 to keep this drive alive. This timeout. I'm going to remind all of you Mac fans uh, to get the latest news and notes from around the Mid-American Conference. You could do that by visiting the outstanding website at mac-sports.com. Uh, you can also uh, have it sent directly to your mobile device or email by following the Mac on Twitter at Mac Sports or by becoming a fan on Facebook. Terrific website. Doug and I use it in our preparation. Mac-sports.com. Are you a Twitterer, Mike? No, Twitter? I do not Twitter, no. I do not. How about a Facebook? I'm not that either. You know the way I feel about it? You can you can text me, right? You can email me, you can get me on my cell phone, you can get me on my home phone. Uh -huh. I'm gonna respond to everybody. That's enough. Gotcha. Uh, That's enough. I'm a Twitterer. I'm not a I'm not a habitual Twitterer. You know. You're not habitual, huh? Habitual. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're looking at the spot here yeah. on Grady where he goes out of bounds. Did he extend the football? He puts the No, he didn't. Uh, he didn't. No, he didn't put the ball out, but I wonder where that leg where that leg touched the white is where they're going to spot that football. He goes, he's in, he's in and out right there. And the ball is clearly back. That's a good job that by the That was a good spot. Great. Yeah, they, they, a good uh, job. Terrific spot by Stan Evans and his crew. Oh, Jerry Kill, what a uh, very strong job uh, this gentleman has done. You know, we talked to him this week about his rushing offense, number one in the MAC, the red zone conversions. Although today, it hasn't been for touchdowns. They haven't put sixes on the board. They've only put threes. And of course, the same thing on the defensive side. Uh, they, they, Central Michigan and Northern right. Illinois, who will meet in November in Mount Pleasant, are the two best on both the offensive and defensive side of the ball in this conference and uh, they, they kind of sit out on that island by themselves actually they do they do a very good job on, on both sides of the ball and they do a good job in special teams we've, we've seen some good special team and punt after further today. review the call and spot on the field are confirmed it's fourth down northern illinois ball northern illinois will be charged with a timeout and Northern Illinois has used its challenge. Stan Evans just laid it all out for you there. Jerry Kill wanted to uh, check that spot, and he wanted it reviewed. We take one more look at it. And I think the referees did a good job because right there he's out of bounds. Now, if he has that ball in the left arm, since he's going to his left and can stretch it out, he may have picked it up. Has the ball in the incorrect arm. But, you know, either way, that's a great job by the refs right there on the spot. Put the ball exactly where it's where he went out of bounds. Well, Jerry Kill uh, marking that football ready for play. I think Akron is uh, determined that Northern Illinois may bust this huddle quickly and get up to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, see, quick, tight. We'll Morgan see if they run it. The Demarcus Grady, did he get that push? I think he did. It'll depend on the spot. Eddie Adamski, Jason Anye Buaga, and Joe Pollock, center and two guards. Did they get a push, Chapman? This, it's right in front of you. This is going to be a close one. It's going to be depending on where that spot. The offensive line comes off the ball. Does a good job. Good job by Akron defensively not getting moved very much. They pick it up, but not by much. Akron does a good job. Northern does a better job moving the offensive line of scrimmage. Yeah, that uh, that Akron multiple 3-3 defense, uh, Hassan Hazimi, Armando Sewell, James Harvey, Sean Fobbs, the linebackers, they've been terrific. I'll throw that bubble screen again, and that's caught by Marcus, Marcus Lewis, big 210-pound senior, making his second reception of the day. So after Tangle DeMarcus Grady Julio wedged Carter. out that, uh, that first down on fourth and one, they'll hit for... Uh, They'll hit for six on the first down throw. Great hands by Marcus Lewis. Ball was a bit low. He goes he down and, and, and snags it with those big paws. This big six foot three, 210 pound senior. And 
great job. And Second they're moving and the football again, getting in scoring range. Let's see what Akron's defense can do. Four wide receivers set now on second and four after Grady hit Lewis for six. Back to the run game. Miko Brown Nico got Brown to the, the 30. Player. So give Miko Brown about three, and it's going to bring up third Hazini and short. Well, Miko Brown hasn't been able to get on track today. The young man from Gain Moss Point, Mississippi, Doug Chapman, coming all the way north to play football. And uh, how about the big win? The 28 21 Northern Illinois win over Purdue at West Lafayette. 150 yards and a, a 67 yard TD against the Boilermakers for Miko Brown. Miko Brown, he can explode at any time. We've seen him do it before. But today they've done a good job. Akron has bottling him up and, and not letting him get warmed up. All right, this is third and two. Straight quarterback draw. Demarcus Grady got the first down, but you know what? That's coming Grady. back. Flags flying, and that might be on Trevor Olson, tackle the big 295-pound sophomore tackle. It, it most certainly is going to come back. As uh, the the line judge Jonathan Shelton delivers it to Stan Evans, let's listen. Chop block, number eight on the offense. Fifteen yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, third down. Doug, we're just talking Miko Brown and the, the tailback with the chop block. And let's see what he does. He goes down low and he was already you know engaged. What? They're going to call that a post and chop, and and, and and it's actually so close. Yeah, you cannot cut an, a defender's legs out when he's engaged up top with an offensive lineman. But Miko Brown goes into that cut, and at the last minute, his tackle jumps out and gets his hands on the defender. So it's a close call. I mean, it wasn't a, a clear cut post and chop, but the referee saw it. They're going to call it. That's going to back him up. This is third and 16 now for Demarcus Grady. The line to make down at the 29. He needs to hit big. Grady's going to fire deep. The fade. That football is broken up. Miguel Graham in coverage with Willie Clark. And Graham, Rock Hill, South Carolina, 170 pounds, senior cornerback. That's a very fine defensive play to break that up. And that's excellent defensive coverage. He gets perfect position, stays with him, runs, turns. He finds the receiver, then he turns right back around, finds the ball, gets underneath the receiver right on his hip. Great, great play. You, you, you can't ask for better coverage. Miguel Graham does a great job on that play. You see Miguel Graham with the uh, the four picks in his career. Josh Wilbur to boot that away, and it's going to get into the end zone. Andre Jones uh, said, "I'm going to take a chance," and it got in the end zone. Akron with an opportunity to take the lead on this possession. Come on back to the cow. Senior homeowners have been feeling anxious about money lately. The good news is at ChicagoDatingSpot.com. I want to say we flash back 2005. J.D. Brookhart leading his Akron Zips out of the football field against Joe Novak and uh, the Huskies of Northern Illinois. Garrett Wolf had a huge day. Wolf assaulting the record book. 270 yards, huh? 42 carries, couple of touchdowns, set three MAC championship game records along the way. There's Garrett Wolf to the house, but Akron quarterback Luke Getze answered Wolf with his own aerial assault. He went 30 of 50 for 413 yards. Watch him seal the deal. 36 yard strike to Dominic Hickson. Touchdown, Akron. 10 seconds left. PAT from Jason Swiger won it. Zips beat Northern Illinois 31 30. J.D. Brookhart and his football team uh, wrapped up a MAC championship. They said in 04, uh, they went six and two in the MAC, and then in 05 followed that up with a five and three. They have not been above 500 since. Now they're going to throw that wide receiver. Throw to Andre Jones. He's got it. See you later. Touchdown, Akron. How about that? Andre Jones on the big touchdown throw from running back Alex Allen. Alex Allen's down, but he does a great job selling this right here. Goes down, it's like he may have went down that shoulder. Andre Jones, they completely confused Northern on this play. Jones is wide open to the house. Great play call, perfectly executed. 
Good job by Akron. Well, Alex Allen getting into the football game and delivering the 80 yard touchdown bomb. He got planted on it. Pat Schiller, that middle linebacker, absolutely blew up Alex Allen. First time the senior out of uh, Youngstown, Ursuline. He's a short yardage guy normally. That young man that unfortunately is down uh, right now. But look at Allen. Now he's selling that option run, and then Schiller drills him. But it uh, looked like to me he threw the football from the what the 15 yard line but here's the rub Doug was it a forward pass instead of an option pitch from Patrick nicely to Alex Allen exactly Can he, did he throw the pitch forward to Allen or did he throw it backward was it a lateral or a backwards pitch hopefully it was because if not that's that's two forward passes down to the league one football so, it looked like from that angle it lateral Allen, so usually he's up on that one. Great play, anyway. There's that man, though, Andre Jones, huh? Mr. Versatility out of Forest Ridge, Maryland, holds in an 80 yard touchdown catch from Alex Allen. Bronco Rogovich to end the PAT. Doug and I were talking about up here. It takes one big play for Akron to go on top. Alex Allen upstairs to Andre Jones. Akron to the lead at 10 6. SV weeknights at 10 on My 50 Chicago, Cable 8. You talk about uh, hitting quickly and decisively. Alex Allen on his first touch of the football today, a backup tailback for the Akron Zips. Unloaded the 80 yard touchdown throw to that young man, Andre Jones. <laughs> Look at the drive disparity there that makes JD Brookhart a happy man. They, they've started to find something offensively, Doug. They have, and, and they've gotten more into a groove, and that's what happens when you have a young quarterback that's, that's not used to this type of game tempo and game experience. He's got to get his feet wet, he's got to get his, himself com comfortable back there. and. They dial up a gadget play at a perfect time in it, but before that, they had strung together a few nice drives led by Nicely, who's starting to nicely get himself comfortable in this offense. Yeah, he is on a Halloween afternoon. All right, Bronco Rogovich, he's going to hang it up short again. And this is Tommy Davis from the 17. Davis on the uh, Northern Illinois return to the 32 yard line. That's a 15 yard return for the Red shirt freshman out of East St. Louis, Illinois. Tommy Davis, and uh, now, for the first time today, Demarcus Grady will run the offense of Jerry Kill with Northern Illinois behind, trailing by four as we get close to the five minute mark here in quarter number three. Let me ask you, Michael, with the way Akron's defense has been playing, how well suited do you think Northern's offenses from playing from behind with them being a run heavy team and not being able to throw the ball very well today. Doug, I tell you what, I, if I'm Northern, I go back to the run game right now. Uh, this first series of the third quarter, they didn't. Now on that double move to Marcus Grady's throw had too much on it. Well, Grady was looking for La rather for Nathan, uh, Nathan Palmer. Did that double move, Doug, and that was there, Palmer had uh, shaken free of cornerback Miguel Graham. Yeah, Palmer had him, but once again, Grady just sometimes he puts a little bit too much or not enough on his throws, and that's an example of just putting too much on it, not putting it on your man. But I'm thinking Akron right now, they're 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 geared for that run. They're going to try to make Grady beat them with his arm, see if he actually can. Well, they've got uh, they've got seven eight in the box, but Northern Illinois has come out throwing the football now back for the ground game, and that's Chad Span. That tough running over the left side, and uh, Span got well, hit uh, by uh, uh, Sean Lemon. Lemon is a uh, a rush linebacker. He wears number eight on that stop. So that's uh, that's six for Chad Span. It's going to bring up a third down and four. Span uh, now very close to the uh, 100 yard mark on the afternoon. And again, Span uh, averages over five a carry and with the 11 touchdowns on the ground this year. 
Big third and four for Grady. He'll zip that throw, and that is caught by Kyle Scarb, the fullback, but Scarb got a knife to the ground, Jalil Carter. Strong safety, that's an impressive stop by Carter. That's a very impressive stop because if he doesn't bring him down, that's an easy first down for Northern to pick up. And now they're forced to punt the football. This brings up fourth and two. It's a huge stop by Jalil Carter out in open space. Now look, you, yeah, look, I mean, look at this. You see, Griff, he, if he doesn't make this tackle, this is a big gainer. That's a huge open field tackle by Jaleel Carter. Toledo St. John's High School and the glass city of Toledo for Khalil Carter. Andre Jones will play it on a hop from the 16, going to head to the sideline, and got ushered out of bounds by four red-shirted Huskies. There's your touchdown maker, Andre Jones. As we said, has uh, been Mr. Versatile in the Mid-American Conference this year. Played cornerback. He's played uh, also at uh, the safety spot. He's uh, taken snaps out of the Wildcat. He's caught touchdown throws as a wide receiver. So there it is, uh, entering today, along with his kick return duties, of course. Yes, he's definitely their go-to guy on offense, and they move him around. He, he can do a lot, and he also can do a lot on defense. Very versatile football player. One of the most talented young men in the Mid-American Conference. Patrick Nicely to the ground game. Roderick Alexander. Tough running inside. Alexander uh, got a couple to bring up second and eight. Northern Illinois' defense, they are uh, one of the stingiest, as we said, in the, in the Mid-American Conference. Pat Schiller, that middle linebacker, wears number 53. They get a look at Jake Kaufman. Kaufman, uh, number, uh, number one in the MAC in terms of tackles for loss. Nicely. Got to step up. Going to gun it deep and running free, but dropping the football was Deshaun Miller. That was six right on Miller's hands, and nicely you couldn't throw the football any better than he did for Deshaun Miller, who dropped it. And we've talked about nicely developing right in front of our eyes and the touch on some of his passes. Perfect, perfect pass to Deshaun. I'm not sure how the coverage was busted that badly for him to get behind the secondary, but he gets back there. Great pass by Nicely. Miller's got to bring that football in. He won Mac East uh, Division Special Team Player of the Week laurels last year. Last week did Deshaun Miller, as we said. He returned that 98-yard kick return up at the Carrier Dome for a TD. Nicely, a lot of time. Look out. Oh, that was a dangerous throw in traffic. Dangerous throw. Mike Salerno had coverage on tight end Kyle Weber, and there's your flag. Pass interference, Salerno. Weber, the intended receiver. That was a play. dangerous throw, though. Dangerous. Threw it right to, to a cover. Pass interference on the defense, number 89. The offense is, retains possession of the ball at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Well, he said 89, but uh, Stan Evans uh, met number 38, Mike Salerno, the uh, the free safety out of the state of Missouri. And Jerry Kill, <laughs> Jerry Kill said, uh, hey, Stan, I'm, I'm not using the number 89 on uh, my defensive unit today. I think it was good coverage. It's just that they got a little too physical out there with him, and they, they decided to throw the flag. But that's a, another tough call for Salerno. Roderick Alexander, look at him stop and start. Kind of gave a leg, Doug, and then took it away. And Alexander's got five yards on that uh, that first down carry. Tracy Wilson, uh, number one, uh, on uh, total tackles. Where's number 25 there? Hard-hitting third-year sophomore out of Harvey, Illinois. 205-pounder. And, and, and Jerry Kill just raved about Tracy Wilson. He said he has greatness written all over him. Made to stop there. On second and six. Play action nicely. Pocket collapses. Jake Kaufman. Oh, Kaufman's in the Halloween spirit today. German Valley, Illinois. That's his fifth sack of the year. And he has been most impressive in his last three games. He has. has not, they've done a good job containing him today. And haven't really heard his name called much. Does a great job splitting to, splitting to Offensive lineman getting through there and getting to the quarterback. 
They needed a huge play on defense, and Kaufman gives it to them. You like the Alice Cooper look, huh? On Jake Kaufman? Get the John Randall. Remember the, remember the John, John Randall? Yeah. Randall, yeah. The eye black. I'm going back to the music entertainment day. <laughs> Alice Cooper. Kaufman with that big league sack. Third and 12. Nicely will gun that throw. Almost picked off. Kyrie Daniels had his hands on the football and has nicely overshot his wideout Anthony Merriweather. And that's a great defensive stand by Northern. Getting pressure on the quarterback, making him uncomfortable. Good protection by Akron for nicely. Just sipped this ball a little too high with a little too much mustard on it. Almost, he's lucky it's not picked off. Well, Merriweather went up the uh, the elevator shaft to try to hold that in. Uh, standing back in those safety spots as that uh, that boot from uh, Akron's uh, Zach Campbell didn't get a whole lot on it. Perez Ashford who had the 44 yard touchdown return. On the punt return last week uh, against Miami's Red Hawks. But uh, that kind of swings field position now. Uh, J.D. Brookhart was looking to turn field position in his favor. But now Northern uh, Illinois is going to start, Doug, at the 47-yard line of Akron, trailing by four. I think Brookhart and Akron wanted to you know, change field position, also eat up some of this clock. Which they did ate a little bit of it up, but did not want to give Northern the ball back with this, with this type of field position, with the way they can move the football. So back to DeMarcus Grady. Grady will keep the football and has come loose into the secondary. That's a nine-yard carry in traffic for DeMarcus Grady, East Grand Rapids High School in the state of Michigan, the third-year sophomore. And this is what he can do. He's like an extra running back back there at the quarterback position. You see, he pulls it down, makes a man miss in the back, but breaks the, breaks the tackle, then he gets through traffic, breaks three tackles and picks up nine yards. When you can get that on first down, bring up second and one, those short yardage situations, you can't ask for anything better than that. All right, we approach 50 seconds left in this third quarter. Is this the drive that uh, Northern uh, Illinois regains the lead? Go back to the ground game, that, uh, that isolation play, the tailback Chad Spann. Span who had the big game last uh, week at Yeager Stadium 156 yards on the ground and touchdown runs of 42 and 40 yards. And Doug he's had multiple touchdowns that young man there Chad Span two touchdowns or better in five of the seven games that Northern Illinois has played this year. Yeah you know Chad Span and and D'Amico and, 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 and Brown. They're both very, very good running backs. It's just whoever has the hot hand is the guy they keep in there. Today it's been Span, who's had the hot hand. Wow, look how short that is. You want to call that? I mean, that's a buy it. No, that's not that much, Mr. Referee. It's not, it's, 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 it's not, it's not that much. It's, it's, it's a lot, a millimeter maybe to get to get the first down. You're passing the eye test up here today, Chapman. Good stuff. On Halloween. Hopefully tonight you'll uh, be, be, what are you dressing up as tonight? You know, uh, I, I didn't bring a costume. You did? Well, I, what do you mean you didn't bring I, a costume? I didn't bring a costume. I'm just, just going to go as myself you know, tonight. Just, just, oh, just, just as, as you, me, huh? You know? <laughs> as in, that'll be scary enough? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, Stan Evans showed us, although my partner Doug Chapman uh, disagrees with uh, the length to go to get this first down. But uh, be that as it may, third and very, very short as Stan Evans is going to start this clock now as we come inside 30 seconds left in the third quarter. Just oh. sneaking right here. Yeah. Northern Illinois will uh, get to that line quickly. And I, well, DeMarcus Grady, Doug, they didn't get much of a push now. They, not as they much did as not as get as much of a push at all as things get a little bit chippy down there in that scrum. Yeah, there's pushing going on after the play, but as an offensive line, they didn't get anywhere near the amount of push that they got in that first quarterback sneak when they picked up Ball the first down so it's going to be an interesting spot oh but they gave it to him okay they got enough push behind center eddie adamski making his 37th consecutive start his 45th career start overall the man who snaps the football this northern illinois offense going to walk over toward that bench so they don't want to snap it again evidently Clock running now. 
stand at what was supposed to be running. Evans is saying, start that clock. <laughs> He's going to wear that arm out, isn't he? For the third time. Look at Stan Evans, the referee. There he is. Start that clock after the first down measurement. One more time. He's going to give it. He's going to tell everybody What's about it now. And a quarter, <laughs> Stan Evans. Uh, the, the clock operator here at Husky Stadium uh, just wasn't picking up on the Halloween designation of Stan Evans. All right, quarter to go, don't go anywhere. 10-6, Akron. Proud to stand on our own, proud to be homegrown. A familiar face and a name you know. Those are sights and sounds of a uh, Max Saturday of uh, college football on ESPN Plus through three quarters. Akron's offense uh, finally starting to gel a little bit after three straight three and outs. And well, Northern Illinois going the, in a different direction as uh, we say happy Halloween to all of you. Mike Simons, our uh, tape room uh, manager extraordinaire, putting together that that look with uh, the Halloween feel for it on this on this Saturday in DeKalb. Michael Rega alongside my partner. Doug Chapman and uh, Akron's hit one big play today, Doug, but they've been able to have that opportunity because of how, how stout and staunch their defense has been in the red zone. Their defense has played great. We know Northern likes to run the football, and they've had success doing it, but Akron, as a defensive unit, has not given up the big play. They've stopped Northern through the air, and they've done just enough to stop them on the ground to be leading this football game. Yeah, just enough. So let's take a look now, but excellent field position, as you see for DeMarcus Grady and uh, this Northern Illinois offense. Uh, Grady going to pull the football down and get tracked down from the backside. So uh, Grady uh, did not have anything that he liked through the air. And both these young quarterbacks, you got to remember, Patrick nicely started the year number four and wasn't even going to play, was going to be redshirted. He has now started his third football game, and this young man, DeMarcus Grady, taking over for the injured Chandler Harnish. You know, Grady's a different type of quarterback than Harnish. He's a scrambler, uses his legs more than Harnish, but I think right now that Akron's going to try to take that away from him and make him beat them with his arm. Now, this is a second and seven, and he'll trigger that quick out, and uh, that is caught. Willie Clark made the grab on second and seven, and uh, Clark came up about a yard shy. Well, it's going to bring up a third down and short. We'll call it third and one. The line to make is at the 27. Watch Willie Clark in his route. See, Willie Clark does a good job pushing up field. Great hand. That's a great catch. The, body's away from, the ball is away from his body a bit, but he reaches out with his hands and makes a, a wonderful football play. All right, third and a long one. Chad Spann next to Demarcus Grady with four wide receivers. Chad Spann, he's got the first down and more. Well, look at him low on the shoulder. He'll bounce out the backside. Chad Spann to the end zone. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. What a tough run from the outstanding back out of Indianapolis, Chad Spann. Beautiful, beautiful run by Chad Spann. I mean, when you, when this is what you ask your running back to do. He gets in there, protects the football, breaks two, three tackles, keeps his balance, uses his vision, switches the ball to the correct arm, and finds the end zone. He's done a great job all year of scoring touchdowns. Wonderful, spectacular run by Chad Spann. 
You can bottle him up all game long, but he's going to pop one eventually. His 13th touchdown of the year, 12th on the ground, as Mike Salerno will add the PAT. Well, Chad Spann, he took Wayne Cobham, the 200-pound senior, wears number 27. He, he just broke out of that hit and then got some big blocks. Did you see your guy Jason Anye Buaga out in front of him? Anye Buaga gets down and escorts his running back into the end zone. That is a great run. Offensive lineman did a great job just continuing to go to the next level, not just blocking and stopping, going up to the next level, linebacker, secondary. But Chad Spann, absolutely excellent run, great balance, great vision. Well, I mentioned those 13 touchdowns on the year. As you see, it leads the MAC as uh, Tom Boschenek and uh, Mike Pockton, our graphics team, let you know. So that uh, counteracts. That's, a, that's, a, that's an explosion play, Doug. A big play from uh, from Chad Spann as he's got 119 yards on the ground now so that that counters that uh, that gadget play of the 80 yard touchdown throw of Akron Alex Allen to uh, Andre Jones it does and it gives Northern the lead once again and gives Akron the football back Akron has been moving the ball lately pretty well but they've had a hard time getting touchdowns besides the gadget play they've not found the end zone so we'll see if Akron can find the end zone now to try to retake this lead Jalil Carter to Sean Miller. Deshaun Miller wears number seven. And again, uh, he is a very dangerous kick returner who took it to the house for a school record 98 yards last week, but they're going to stay with Jalil Carter. They keep it away from Deshaun Miller. Carter with a good move out over the 30-yard line. And that, that's an excellent kick return for Jalil Carter. As he's got Patrick nicely and Akron in pretty good operating shape at their 32 yard line. Did get a flag on the back end of that. Offside, kick it to number nine, five yard down to the end of the run, first down. We'll start this drive from the 37 yard line as you get an offside on special team coaches. Will not like that, Doug, when they get penalties on their group. Especially on the kickoff team. When that's when you have to know you cannot cross that line before that ball's kicked. And that drives coaches crazy. Here's again that fourth true freshman to start at quarterback in the history of the Akron Zips program. Patrick nicely. And Broderick Alexander just got planted by Nabal Jefferson. 270 pound. Doug, there's another true freshman right there that Jerry Kill thinks he's got a chance to be a marvelous player. And you watch the ball, Jefferson. This is a big time football play. He splits the double team in front of him. He doesn't do anything fancy. He gets directly into the gap, splits two men, and makes the play in the backfield. Beautiful play by the ball, Jefferson. For a loss of three, second down and 13 now. This crowd's starting to come up inside 13 minutes left in it. As Akron down three. Broderick Alexander could not shake that tackle off the corner of Chris Smith. Love when corners come up, Doug Chapman, and make that kind of a secure hit. Palmetto, Florida, the junior Chris Smith. You love to see your corners when they're shedding the blocker or shedding the receiver, and they're keeping their eyes active, watching where the ball is, and making a play. Good job by Smith. Let's go bring up a third and 12 now. Patrick nicely with four Akron receivers as this crowd on their feet. Blitz coming nicely, throw incomplete. He wanted Jeremy LaFrance. Kind of a hot read, Doug, as the pressure was coming once again from uh, uh, Brandon Bice. The pressure was coming, so he knows he's going to have man-to-man -man coverage. Throws it a little bit too much inside for LaFrance to get to. Good route by LaFrance, just the ball's just inside a little bit too much. Tommy Davis wears number 20. Perez Ashford wears number 7 to await this kick of Zach Campbell. Campbell again did not get a lot on it, and look at the field position that Northern Illinois is going to have when we get back from their 47 yard line. The Huskies will start with a 13 10 lead. Ready? All right, what do you say we take a look at our late game analysis brought to you by our good pals at Taco Bell? Make sure you think outside the buns. There's Northern Illinois 
up by three at 13 to 10. Doug, we said they're number one in the MAC. They average 196 yards on the ground per game, and Chad Span has keynoted that today. Yes, they're going to probably get close to or past their average today. They have 179 already. Chad Span has been huge today in the running game. 119 yards, had a huge run to put them back on top in this football game. And like we said earlier, this is what they do here. They stick with it. If it doesn't work early, it'll work late. And it has worked late for them. Well, let's see if Akron's defense can come up with a stop here to keep a minute. Now DeMarcus Grady. Grady on that quarterback keep. And he is cut free. Still alive to the second level and more. DeMarcus Grady. That is a run of uh, better than 30 yards down to the 22-yard line. Make it. Let's give them 30 right on the screws, huh? And, and the poor tackling that's going on on, on, this, on Akron defensively. The runners for Northern are just running through arm tackles. There's one. There were two. There's three. There's finally he's dragged down from the back, but not after picking up huge chunks of yardage. You, you got to bring these guys down on, on first contact. Got an injured Akron zip defender you know, trying to uh, corral Demarcus Grady while the Akron uh, athletic training staff is attending to business. Now we just mentioned 196 yards per game does Northern Illinois average on the ground. They just went over the 200 yard mark on that uh, that scamper of 30 yards by Demarcus Grady. 210 yards now as a Grady has thrown for 57 and rushed for 80. So again we're seeing uh, young quarterbacks in here as uh, you get a good look at uh, Sean Lemon. Lemon the 235 pound junior rush linebacker being assisted off. Well, 210 yard Doug this is what they do. Uh, Jerry kills and we heard Joe Novak at halftime uh, Novak who had the, the brilliant 12 year run here with with Garrett Wolf. And uh, uh, Michael Turner and Thomas Hammock and just outstanding backs have been a part of the lineage of Northern Illinois football. And, and running the football is an attitude. It's, it, you can have the best backs back there. You can have the best plays drawn up. But if your team doesn't have the attitude and the mindset that we are going to run the football and we are going to be successful at it, it's not going to work. That's one thing they've had here. They've had an atmosphere of we are going to run the ball and be good at it. When, you, when they run the ball, as you see, 10 and 0 uh, over the last couple of seasons. So we'll keep an eye on that. Right back to uh, the quarterback keep is Demarcus Grady. Grady wedged out a, a couple following the blocks of uh, Joe Pollock, his right guard, Adam Keel, the third year sophomore right tackle. And Doug, I tell you what, I think it's important. We mentioned Eddie Adamski, the center, is 40. Uh, fifth career start Jason Anya Buaga Trevor Olson the left tackle Adam Keel the right tackle Joe Pollock that right guard these are the guys that uh, shepherd the number one ground game in the Mac every Saturday you know, they don't get their names in the paper but true football fans know you cannot run the football without an excellent offensive line up front those are really the workhorses that, that, that open the holes and protect the quarterback. They do a great job at it. The heavy lifters, wide receiver screen caught by Perez Ashford, and he'll get run out of bounds as uh, uh, Manly Waller, the uh, sophomore who's back in a starting job off injury out of Decatur, Georgia, pushed Ashford out of bounds. And they love this long screen to the outside to the wide receivers, and it's worked for them. It's, a, it's pretty much a running play to the receivers, like a long toss. And, it's a, it's a staple in their offense, and they've run a lot of it this afternoon and had success with it. It's going to bring a third down and a call of three now with a three wide receiver look. Chad Spann offset. And that, uh, that one back look next to Demarcus Grady. Grady going to keep the football. He's got the edge. He's got a first down. He got the corner turn down to the eight yard line. Well, they, Doug, as we talked about, and knowing better than you to tell us, when we say they, they challenge the edge and challenge the perimeter, what are we talking about? That means getting a player with ability on the outside of the box. The box is where all of the players, the defensive, offensive linemen, all the linebackers, and you get an athlete on the corner that has speed and he can get the corner, turn the corner, and get upfield. And you see that with Grady. He's not just a quarterback, he's like an extra running back back there. And, Direct snap to him, just a toss left, pretty much is what it was. He gets out there, picks up yardage, and once again, they're in scoring range. 
First to goal from the eight yard line. Football on the ground, and I think Chad Spann helped out Demarcus Grady and got on it. Well, he had to because uh, that football was down on the ground, and Denny uh, Odafin had a shot at it, number 67 for Akron. And that's what can happen in these spread offenses with there's so much shotgun quarterback, there's so much snapping in the shotgun that sometimes the snap can be low and if the running back is running in there to take the handoff, they can bobble the snap or bobble the handoff and put the ball on the ground. Fortunately, they got it back. All right, second a goal now from the 11 yard line. Brady put it down again, then got the football back. And now gets a shove back as he got inside the 10 yard line. Denny Odafin over there again. Brian Wagner on the stop as well, the middle linebacker. So on two straight stabs, Demarcus Grady has had the football hit the ground. Yeah, the first snap that they fumbled was not his fault. This one, you know, was a little bit low, but it hits him in his hands. The snaps aren't going to always be perfect. He, luckily, he gets it in, but hey, you look at it now, Michael, it's third and eight, and they've, and they've got to put the ball in the end zone. They're going to go three wide now. Well, Grady on third and eight. Rush coming it down, he goes. He got popped from the backside. That's Amin Kabir, the outside linebacker, Warrensville, Ohio, making the hit. Though so Kabir, he came free, Doug. I don't think a Northern Illinois Husky got a hand on him. He came free, and he's lucky that that ball did, um, yeah, Northern is lucky that ball did not come out. Kabir gets there, perfect timing, great play call, great defensive call right there, center of the blitz. Defense, 28. Maybe now we know why Amin Kabir came so free, as I mentioned. He beat the snap count. And got there so quickly, exactly. <laughs> lined up lined up a little bit too close to that line of scrimmage, but still brings the stage. Brings up third and four now for, for Northern. They uh, Doug, that hurts Akron, though, because Mike Salerno was on the football field, and this was uh, even, even if he hits the three. Only well, kept it a six-point game. Let's see. Third and goal for the four. Play action, Grady goes that in route. We've got a flag, and that's going to be pass interference. That is going to be called on Manly Waller. Grady was looking to fire to Landon Cox in the end zone. Pass interference, defense, number six. The ball is placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. And that's two tough calls for Akron. That's, that's two tough penalties for Akron. It, 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 could, could definitely change this game right now. Doug, look at the different dynamic in this now. Again, Mike Salerno was on the field. Granted, it's a chip shot, but let's uh, let's say he hits. It's going to be a six-point game. Now, this could take it to a two-possession game if they get in the end zone. It definitely could. It changes the entire game. And, and penalties. Sometimes penalties can change the game for you, and they have so far. Chad Span. He's into the end zone. Second touchdown of the day. Chad Spann in Northern Illinois, his 14th touchdown of the year that leads the Mac, and his 13th on the ground. And, and again, what a difference this could make as we look at the, the blocking for Chad Spann. You know, Akron goes from having Northern put the ball on the ground twice and then get a big sack called back from the penalty, pass interference, and it leads to a Chad Spann touchdown. And just like that, Northern is up now, about, about to go up 20 to 10. PAT added by Mike Salerno, and indeed, this is now a two-possession football game. Akron thought they had a stop in the red zone, but Chad Spann working off the blocks of the left side, second TD of the day, 14th of the year. Now on weekdays at 1 and 1.30 on My 50 Chicago Cable 8. It is now a, a two possession lead for the Huskies of Northern Illinois as uh, the ladies know how to how to celebrate here at DeKalb on a Halloween afternoon. Uh, a couple penalties in the red zone uh, really really hurt the Akron uh, cause defensively 53 yard drive and just 356 and Chad Spann uh, again Dougie leads the Mac in TDs as we said 14 overall 13 now rushing and uh, two of them today and uh, this one. You know, Patrick Nicely in this Akron offense, we were just talking during the uh, the timeout, going to probably have to put points on the board right now as we're inside the eight-minute mark. They've got to put points up. They've got to get a quick score. They've got to find a way to move the football down the field in big chunk, pick up big chunks of yard. Let's see if they can get it done. 
Well, this uh, kickoff is going to be left short at the uh, the 33 yard line although good operating position for the Akron Zips is on that uh, kickoff return uh, the up man for uh, Akron. And that's where Patrick nicely will start. Well nicely is going to get an opportunity here to. Get the job done. The way that that was Tyler Campbell, by the way, from uh, Pickerington, Ohio, the youngster on the, the special teams on that kickoff return. Now, here's that quick pitch to Broderick Alexander. Oh, Alexander got greeted rather rudely, didn't he? As that hit came from Corey Hansen. What a football player Corey Hansen is. Corey Hansen with three interceptions this year. Got to uh, DeKalb Doug from Minneapolis, Minnesota, one of your favorite cities in America. Yeah, that's been about four years out there when I was playing for, for the Vikings. Very lovely city, but he was not lovely on that play. He came with a lot of aggression on that tackle. He just takes him out of bounds. Well, I got to question you about Minneapolis in a moment. Uh, bubble screen nicely will hit it, and it is caught by Andre Jones. Jones has got a first down before he's tracked down from the backside by DJ Perkle, who wears number 98. Hey, Andre Jones, is that synonymous with explosion plays for the Akron Zips? They've got to find a way to get the football in his hands because every time he gets the ball, something happens. He's looking to make a big play. You see him, great catch, great vision. This stops. He's trying to score. He, he knows his team needs points. He's trying to take one to the house. Now for the 39-yard line, nicely he's going to swing it out, and he's got Broderick Alexander. Alexander will break out of a tackle and get out of bounds. We've been really impressed by Alexander today. He broke the tackle of Kyrie Daniels. Again, folks, this is the first time this young man out of the state of Georgia has stepped on a football field as a collegian, as an 18-year-old true freshman. They were going to redshirt him, but he's a starty tailback now for Akron. And that's how it works in football. Somebody goes down, someone else has to step up. He stepped up and he's played well. Very well. Second and eight, nicely. Wants the whole bundle for Andre Jones. He had his hand on it and could not reel it in as Chris Smith maybe got a hand on Jones to rake the football away. That's good coverage by Smith downfield on Jones. Jones is their playmaker. Very good pass by Nicely. Jones could have reeled this in. Smith knocks it away at the last minute, but it originally hits Jones' hands. Could have been a big play or touchdown, but. Great play by Smith. Great play by Nicely getting that ball down there. Jones got to reel it in. It doesn't look like this true freshman out of Willoughby, Ohio, Patrick Nicely and Andre Jones. They're starting to develop a little something. They have to. Yeah. They have to. Third and eight now. And flag stop it. It's going to be a false start on Akron. First third, 71 on the offense. Third third down. Mike Ward, the left guard, got hit with the, uh, the false start. Now that backs it up, but it takes it to third and 13. The line to make is down at the 29 yard line. So third and 13 as we're inside the seven minute mark as you've got a good look at J.D. Burkhart. And very, very positive around his football team. Uh, they lost five straight, but have played better football of late. Third and 13, nicely. Gonna pull the football down and now gets stepped out of bounds and he got hit late. Flags flying all over the place. Well, flags everywhere as nicely got on that boundary and got hit late by Brandon Bice. And you see nicely, actually, Akron almost gets away with a hold right here and then nicely breaks the pocket, hit late, definitely a penalty. You know, there might be a block in the back though on Akron as well. I said it was Brandon Bice. Uh, Bryce was over there, but Kyrie Daniels pushed Patrick nicely. Daniels, the cornerback, actually was the one with that hit on the white boundary in front of the Akron bench. Watch the block in the back, though, Doug, right there, yep. middle of your screen. Yep, there's a block in the back, and there's the late hit. Got to be offsetting, don't they? They should be. Stan Evans Mike uh, evidently giving us some problems or uh, Stan's got to get that on button working.
During the play, there were two fouls. The first foul is illegal block in the back on the offense, number 82. After the play was over, there's dead ball, unnecessary roughness on the defense, number 23. 15 yards will be added to the spot where the first enforcement is ended. Automatic first down. So, we mentioned Kyrie Daniels, the uh, junior cornerback. Now, Jerry Kill wants Stan Evans to uh, come on over and have a chat with him and get a further breakdown of this. They're going to add 15 yards from the back of the play, which is going to mark it off, uh, if my math is right, down inside the 35-yard line. I'm sure Coach Kill wants an explanation as to why... <laughs> Why that play? Why it was marked off that way? But you know, when, when the refs call it, it is what it is. Well, Jerry Kill is getting his explanation from Stan Evans, the veteran uh, head of officiating, the referee in uh, this one today. Well, we're delighted you're uh, at it with us uh, here on a Halloween Happy Saturday, Saturday Husky Saturday Stadium, Saturday DeKalb, Saturday. Illinois, Saturday. on the campus of Northern Illinois University with Doug Chapman. I'm Michael Regai and all of our terrific ESPN Plus crew. Third to 20 to 10, Northern Illinois on top by 10 inside seven minutes left. Patrick nicely on first down. And his throw was dropped with a late hit there. Daniels just drilled Jeremy Bruce after the ball was dropped and on the ground. Back to back 15 yard personal fouls on cornerback Ty Kyrie Daniels. Now that one could have gone either way. I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not sure if I agree with that one. And Doug, I don't, I don't know. Daniels was about four yards away when that ball was on the ground. I mean, I know you're coming up to make a play, but it, you know, we could see it again. But how often no, do you Bruce see that? Bruce dropped it. It was on that? the ground. How often do you see that not called, though, Michael? That doesn't. Get, that doesn't get. No, I understand. Out. But watch again. Look, ball, ground. I mean, he'd almost start to raise up. You think that that that's iffy? You kind of. Th you think that's iffy? I think it's iffy. But I, I understand. But, but they've been watching him, though. I understand. Let's say real speed, real quick. <laughs> yeah. No, it's 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 tight. No, it certainly is tight. But they got Daniels for 15 more. So it's a football now at the 19 yard line in the red zone. Akron trying to draw possibly to within three or two. Bubble screen. Andre Jones will make the catch and get uh, spun to the ground by Chris Smith inside the 15. That's a gain of five on the hookup from nicely to Jones. We're going to get to the six minute mark, but Akron's going quickly. Yes, they are. They know they have to get points on the board and they have to get them in a hurry. So they're getting to that line quick and calling the play. They're down by two possessions. Now this is the tailback, the youngster, Roderick Alexander, 215-pound freshman on the carry. Alexander maybe got uh, maybe got one. It's going to bring up a third down, and uh, let's call it a long four. The line to make is down at the nine-yard line. Look at Akron looking for their first third down conversion of the day. They're zip for eight. Blitz coming nicely to step up. Look out. Set time. Lost the football. Recovered by Northern Illinois. Brandon Bice on the sack. And the recovery from strong safety, Tracy Wilson. Bice caused it. You see nicely looking down. Just run that football, young man. When there's no one open, pull it down. That's that youth and inexperience. He'll learn. Pull the ball down and just get two or three yards instead. Gets caught up in the traffic, gets the ball knocked from him, fumble turnover. That's unfortunate because the penalties had helped them get decent field position where they could have gotten at least three. They needed ten to tie it up, seven and threes in any any order. So they could put themselves in field goal range and they turn the football over. And that's a true freshman mistake. You know, I, Doug, you'd say hung on to it a little bit too long, but. I know we're very impressed with Patrick nicely and the way he handles himself and you know, J.D. Brookhart uh, told us that this week that he was thrilled with how this young man has accepted this challenge 
of leading the football team. Demarcus Grady has come out the backside. He's outside the numbers and running free and out of bounds at the 42 yard line. That's 22 yards and a first down. And how about Demarcus Grady? He set a career high and now gone over 100 yards on the ground. And he's just, like I said, an extra running back back there. He can run the ball just as well, if not better than the running backs for Northern Illinois. And you see, he has great escapability. A lot of quarterbacks would have been sacked, brought down for a loss, or maybe picked up a yard. Not Demarcus Grady. He gets outside and looks like a tailback in space. Career high, 111 yards on the ground for this uh, young sophomore from East Grand Rapids High School in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Now back to the ground game, and uh, you're going to get a heavy dosage of this as you know that uh, head coach Jerry Kill told Chad Spann he's going to get a heavy workload, and uh, from left to right, left tackle Trevor Olson, left guard Jason Anye Buaga, the center Addy Adamski, Joe Pollock the right guard, and Adam Keel the right tackle, Doug Chapman, the, uh, the heavy lifters. They're going to do their thing right now. And those five guys, they've been, the, they've been the starters all year, have not been changed in and out. And right now they're going to be told, pin years back, come off the ball and open some holes up. Just open another hole as Chad Spann will uh, knife his way off that left side. Let's take a look at our defensive play of the game. Brandon Bice, watch him rip the football free from Patrick Nicely. Causing the fumble, recovered by Tracy Wilson. Defensive play of the game brought to you by Cooper Tires. Don't give up a thing. Just happened a moment ago, but uh, there, there, there is a Tracy Wilson. And again, Jerry Kill told us in our, our conversations with the coaches this week that that young man has defensive secondary star written all over him here in DeKalb. Chad Spann got knocked down on uh, third and long, and uh, Akron is going to take a quick timeout, Doug, with 3.28 left. They're going to have to reset the clock. The clock, clock ran off about four more seconds after Spann got taken to the ground, and uh, the head coach, J.D. Brookhart, quickly got a timeout for Akron. Definitely. They, they, they think if they can get the football back and hopefully get another drive going and try to get some Please points about it, out of this. Please set the game clock at three minutes, 30 seconds. Yeah, I said four seconds uh, was uh, run off, and uh, that it was. They want to reset at 3.30 again. The official game clock here uh, in the stadium said 3.26, so they'll put it back to three minutes and 30 seconds left. This has been a good one today, and we hope you enjoyed uh, Mac Football on ESPN Plus, presented by our good friends at Marathon. Michael Regai, my partner Doug Chapman, and uh, Doug, I, you know, for a football team that's lost five in a row, on uh, this Halloween Saturday uh, here in DeKalb. You have to be impressed by the way J.D. Brookhart's kids showed the resolve, hanging in there, took the lead before these two Chad Span touchdowns. But they're still in the football game, and he's calling timeouts to try to see if that offense could get their hands back and can serve as much time as possible. And I'm very impressed with them, especially on defense. Early in this football game, they gave up some plays but did not allow Northern to get to the end zone and then nicely on offense made a few plays the front and back made a few plays so they were able to make a lot of plays they got guys down and guys injured but they they persevered Mike Salerno going to angle that kick away from Andre Jones and is that a thing of beauty from Mike Salerno how about that when you put that baby down inside the five yard line you are going to get a lot of glad hands from your special teammates Mike Salerno pretty work Akron's got a long way to go and down 10 this afternoon's Mech football clash on ESPN plus been brought to you by Marathon fueling the American spirit also by Cooper tires don't give up a thing by champion it's how you play by Allstate. You're in good hands. And by Autotrader.com. You find the car you want, the price you want, Autotrader.com, the ultimate automotive marketplace. Hope you've enjoyed our ESPN Plus crew. has been phenomenal today. Doug Chapman's here. I'm Michael Regai in Northern Illinois looking to uh, go to 5-3 and three on the year and 3-1 and one in the Mac West if they can hang on to this 10 point lead so they put it in their hands of the second ranked defense behind Central Michigan 
in the Mid-American Conference. And after that Mike Salerno punt, Patrick Nicely's got to go 97 yards. That out route almost got picked off. It was almost picked off. He wanted to find uh, his wide out to Sean Miller. And uh, that was broken up by Chris Smith, who got a good break on the football. Got a good break. They're trying to go downfield to pick up a big chunk of, a chunk of yardage. And right now, Northern is just sitting back, waiting for them to come vertical. Chris Smith does a great job breaking the ball. Looked like they, he may have been asking, Sean Miller may have been asking for interference, but not going to get it on that play. Nicely to throw out of the end zone, and that was uh, in the hands and out of the hands of Jeremy LaFrance. Well, that, that could have picked up a first down and maybe uh, gone for 15 to 20 yards if LaFrance hangs on to that dart that Patrick Nicely delivered. It could have Nicely has put the ball on his receivers a couple times this afternoon, and they have just dropped the ball. They haven't caught the ball. They've, they've, they've dropped a few passes that have him directly in the hands and have not helped Nicely out at all. And they haven't been able to uh, find anything with Deshaun Miller either. And, uh, Miller has been a big cog. Look out, got to get rid of the football out of the end zone, and Nicely did because the pressure was coming. And they're going to rule that incomplete. D.J. Perkle from Frankfurt, Illinois, put the hit on Nicely. Did it get out of his hands in time? A lot of the pressure has come to, on Nicely from the outside out of the tackle area. The defensive ends have been closing the pocket down on him. And I'm not sure if he got – did he get rid of that before his knee touched down? Yeah, referee Stan Evans, who was uh, monitoring right behind Nicely, said it did. So having to boot the football out of the end zone on, uh, on fourth down. And that football uh, did not get much on it and is going to stop at the 27-yard line. Our electrifying uh, play of the game brought to you by First Energy. Chad Spann bouncing out of the pack and finding the end zone for his first to two TDs on the day. You know, Chad, so he shows power, he shows vision, he shows speed, he shows balance, he shows a little bit of everything on that play, and great game he's had today. You see over 120, he's had 126 yards, two touchdowns to add to his yearly total, 19 carries. It, we didn't see a lot of Miko Brown today, but out of the backfield, Chad Spann got the job done. Yeah, uh, career high of a buck 56 uh, last week at Miami in that 27 to 22 win and uh, that was the first start for DeMarcus Grady Grady on the quarterback keep and he got tracked down from the backside so a short gain for Grady on first down as a Mike Thomas the junior linebacker out of Columbus made the stop for Akron and uh, Akron's going to burn their second time out. so now with 252 left J.D. Brookhart and the Zips can stop it but one more time they can stop it one more time, and they've got to hope their defense comes up with a play. They've got to strip the ball, find a way to get a turnover, because if it keeps going this way, Northern's just going to be able to run it, run the clock out. If they do turn it back over, Akron's going to have such bad field position, they're not going to be able to, to get much going. They've had problems getting big chunks of yardage on offense as it is. Sure, and think about it, the two big plays here in the last few minutes, not only the Brandon Bice uh, strip sack, of uh, Patrick Nicely that uh, was recovered by uh, Travis Wilson, but the Mike Salerno angle kick that settled down at the two yard line to pin Akron deep on that last possession that Patrick Nicely had a throw out of the end zone on and his three throws. And that's what championship teams do and teams that are successful. That's what they can do. They have people on all facets, offense, defense, and special teams that can make plays, not just a running back or a receiver or a linebacker. They have a punter that can angle and kick the ball out of bounds, or a kicker that can make a long field goal. That's how teams win football games. They'll run out of the I formation and run the reverse. The reverse, and on that corner is Nathan Palmer. Down inside the 10 to the seven yard line. Now that caught Akron a little bit unawares. They're thinking that Chad Spann is going to pound, and they went off the play fake, and look at that reverse to Nathan Palmer. Akron's hunkered down in the middle. They're expecting that inside run, and this great play call by Northern. They get Palmer around the edge, almost gets to the end zone, but picks up a big chunk of yardage, another Northern first down on the ground, and once again, they're knocking on the door of the end zone. 23 yards for Nathan Palmer as uh, Northern Illinois now up to 269 yards on the ground today. 
Here's Chad Spann trying to get the corner and he got bounced back. That is a terrific hit from uh, Akron out of the uh, the secondary. As uh, that zips in came from Kevin Davis a red shirt junior out of California and you see span wanted to go inside this play is designed to go inside with the misdirection of the end around from the receiver motion the play they just ran before but great penetration by Akron closing down the A and B gap forcing span to bounce it out stringing him out and and coming up with a loss actually. It's going to bring up a uh, second and goal now for the seven yard line. They're going to go three wide with Span offset with Demarcus Grady. Chad Span again tracked down for the backside. That's Kevin Davis again. So Davis on the Travis squad today. Uh, this young man has uh, come in and uh, made a, a couple of stops here. 205 pound redshirt junior. JC transfer out of uh, Cabrillo College in the state of California. And right now they've got to try to strip this football, try to knock the ball loose. They, they're their only hope right now to get a score and get this football back. They've got to strip it and try to get this football out of the ball carrier's hands. Well, we uh, approach 60 seconds right now, and this is now the uh, the third down play, third and uh, goal again for the seven yard line. Akron's got one more time out if they want. Again, run the reverse. Palmer inside the five to the end zone. Touchdown, Nathan Palmer, Northern Illinois. And Coach Kill and company says if it worked one time, let's try it again. A play you don't usually see this close to the end zone, an end around, but when Akron is hunkered down in the middle, expecting that inside run, which Span has had so much success for, a play like this can definitely pop. You see Nathan Palmer come around. Get, get to the perimeter. A nice job cutting back inside. Great blocking downfield. Drags two defenders in with them for the touchdown to put the finishing touches on this football game. The fullback Kyle Scarb added that final block on linebacker Mike Thomas. Mike Salerno adding the PAT for the third time today. Boy, you would not have imagined that uh, about an hour ago was 10 6 Akron. And uh, the Zips had caught fire on that. Uh, that gadget 80 yard touchdown throw from Alex Allen to wide receiver Andre Jones and as a matter of fact let's uh, Northern Illinois uh, their 20th rush rushing touchdown of the year three of them today two from Chad Spann and uh, this one on the reverse from Nathan Palmer and I mentioned Alex Allen to Andre Jones they sold it well and it resulted in an 80 yard touchdown throw from Allen to Jones and that's our good hands play of the day brought to you by the good gang at all state as Andre Jones had everybody beat going to the end zone and that gave J.D. Brookhart's football team a 10-6 lead early in the quarter number three but three rushing touchdowns and of course that big strip sack and fumble recovery stripped by uh, Brandon Bice and recovered by Travis Wilson really uh, put the final nail on this one. Akron was trying to get back to a one possession game. Jalil Carter had the football go through his hands and he's going to come out of the end zone and get swarmed on before he could get back to the 10 yard line. And you know what uh, that uh, Northern Illinois Doug also did a great job of today Deshaun Miller the Mac East Division special team player of the week never got his hands on a kickoff return today. Of course he he dropped a potential touch there's Deshaun number seven he dropped what would have been a potential a touchdown throw from Patrick nicely in the third quarter and that's just a good job by, by, by the kicking team and Northern Illinois of just keeping the football away from a playmaker and you look at the score and you see that Akron's gonna not gonna get out of here with the win but they really fought this entire football game they hung in there and they, they, they played hard been decimated by injuries got a freshman at quarterback but they really fought for, they fought this after yeah they did uh, Dale Martin uh, just got the carry the sophomore out of uh, right here on the state of Illinois out of Bolingbrook he's a transfer from uh, the University of Louisville 195 pound sophomore so uh, but Akron gave the start today to Broderick Alexander the true freshman Dale Martin pretty good shake there out over the 15 and 
It's going to keep the clock running, and that is going to be the final play of a Halloween afternoon here at Husky Stadium. It's over. You can put it in the books for Jerry Kill and his Huskies of Northern Illinois. They go to five and three overall, and uh, also go in Mid American Conference play to three and one in the MAC West as they exploded in the second half to beat Akron the final at 27 to 10. All right, don't go away. We'll come back and uh, put a topper on this one on a Halloween Saturday following the Northern Illinois win over Akron. This afternoon's ESPN Plus game out of Husky Stadium on the campus of Northern Illinois University brought to you by our friends at Marathon Fueling the American spirit. All right, it's a final as uh, Chad Spann had another big day finding the end zone as Northern Illinois beats Akron 27-10. Michael Regai, Doug Chapman. Chad Spann, terrific day. You've been carrying you and Miko Brown this offense. How about it for your offensive line, though? These guys are, are some of the biggest heavy lifters in college football, Chad. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, they do a great job, and they're, they're big and they're tough. You know, a lot of them might be a little dinged up, you know, ankles, and they come to play every day. So, I mean, that really helps us. Chad, you guys, they, Akron did a good job kind of slowing you guys down in the running game early, but you kept with it. The touchdown run you had where you bounced off about four or five tacklers. What was your mindset the whole game, just kind of staying with the run, knowing it was going to happen for you eventually? Oh, we just, you know, we were a running team, and we just decided to stick with it. You know, guys kept, kept coming up to us, you know, telling you we got to get the running game going. And, you know, we, we knew one was going to bust soon, so, you know, just took the opportunity when it came. Chad Spann joining us, uh, the touchdown maker again today, 14 touchdowns, leads the Mid-American Conference. Chad, what about Demarcus Grady? We were very impressed with this young man. You lose your starting quarterback, Chandler Harnish. What has Grady meant to the consistency of your offense and the wins at Miami last week and now today? Uh, Grady's doing an excellent job coming in, uh, you know, stepping up for Chandler. Uh, you know, he's he's uh, he hasn't been throwing the ball. We haven't been throwing the ball as much, but, you know, he makes a lot of plays with his feet. You know, you see a lot of third downs. We give it to him and he makes he produces. He's had a, he had a lot of yards today, picked up a lot of first downs and he's just he's doing filling in real great right now. To kind of stay with the running attack, Chad, you guys don't throw the football a lot, but how impressed are you with your wide receivers, the way they block downfield for you guys, and how big are they in the running game? Oh, they're tremendous. You know, uh, Coach Fleck, our wide receiver coach, he comes out here and he, he makes them work. You know, we know we know we're a running team, and they work very hard at run blocking, you know, getting their head in front, you know, getting the extra cut, you know, just doing everything they can to spring us running backs. They do a tremendous job. They, they're just as much, you know, to blame for our successes as anyone else. Hey, Chad, final thing real quick. Uh, you're chasing Central Michigan. You still face them in November. You got a shot. How do you feel right now about going into the month of November 3-1 and one and where your football team is? Uh, we feel real good, you know, but uh, we really just want to take a one game at a time. You know, we got, we got another game on Tuesday, got a short week, so we just want to focus on that one game and just keep moving until we get there. Chad Spann, another terrific afternoon, couple of touchdowns. Enjoy seeing you run the rock, young man. Appreciate it. All right, Chad Spann uh, joining us with the two touchdowns today. Michael Regai, Doug Chapman, and, well, this offensive football team. That's why we certainly made a point to uh, uh, give the kudos to that, that fivesome, that offensive line headed by Eddie Adamski. Nothing changes here, Doug, at, uh, at Northern Illinois. And let's go back down to the, uh, the field here at Husky Stadium, and we're joined by the second-year head coach, Jerry Kill. Jerry, we came in raving about uh, your offensive ground game, and even with uh, DeMarcus Grady, of course, that adds to that. Uh, how important has it been for the consistency of this football team and what DeMarcus Grady's been able to deliver for you with Chandler Harnish in, uh, injured? Well, he did a great job today. I mean, it's a, it's a tough situation for your number two quarterback to come in, and he's a little bit different style than Chandler, but he's done a very, very good job. And, and uh, you know, the big thing is he didn't turn the ball over today. And uh, when you don't turn the ball over and you can run the ball and you can stop the run, you, you got a chance to win. Coach, on the other side of the football, you didn't do a lot early, but in the second half, how happy are you that you were able to get to the quarterback and not just get pressure, but actually get sacks on him in, late in the ball game? I think I think that certainly made a difference. You know, they 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 had a couple you know couple guys open on us, but uh, again with the pressure, sometimes they're, they're going to get behind you, and you just you got to take a chance sometimes. And uh, you know, our guys did a good job of putting pressure, and and uh, you know, I, I was impressed with their quarterback. He's a young guy; it's going to be a pretty good player. 
Jerry, here you go into November now, five and three overall. You're three and one in the MAC. You still have the opportunity to face Central Michigan. Is the message to the kids that, uh, hey, let's keep playing every day, every week? You control uh, things uh, in your own destiny. Yeah, you're exactly right. We got to take one day at a time, and we got to get healthy. <laughs> and uh, that's what a lot of people say this time of year. But uh, we got to get healthy, uh, take one day at a time, just keep getting better, and take care of that football. Jerry Kill, thanks so much. We appreciate your time. Congratulations to you and your football team. Thank you very much. Jerry Kill, 27 to 10. Hey, you know what? I mean, here, Central Michigan's 5-0 in the Mag Doug, but again, Northern Illinois, if they keep winning out, they'll get their shot against Central Michigan in late November. If they keep winning out, if they keep running the football with the, way, the, the, the ability that they have to run the ball, that's how you stay in football games. When you can control the line of scrimmage, control the clock, and dictate to the defense what you want to do. That's how you win football games. That and the defensive presence. They'll get Chandler Harnish back soon, but DeMarcus Grady is making a case to stay on the football field, isn't he? That's the thing. If he can stay on the football field and he can, if they can get him throwing the football a little more now. They know what he can do with his legs, but if they can make some plays with his arm, it's going to be dangerous. Partner, good job. Appreciate it. Even Thank though you were cold all day. <laughs> yeah, I was a little chilly. But <laughs> a I, Minnesota I made it. Viking that's cold. <laughs> Do you believe that? <laughs> Seems to kind of go against the grade a little bit. We played indoors. Sure. We played inside. There yeah, you we go. We played indoors. Played indoors to be sure. Hope you enjoyed it on a Halloween Saturday, everybody, as Northern Illinois exploded behind Chad Spann, DeMarcus Grady, and their defense in the fourth quarter and beat uh, Akron the final at 27-10. to 10. Now, for more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Closed captioning has been provided by Conoco. Take it uh, to the bank. Now for our producer, Greg Logan, our director, Dave Tasca, all of our terrific ESPN Plus crew for Doug Chapman. I'm Michael Regai, bidding you a fun Halloween night from DeKalb, Illinois. The preceding has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in college sports. The odds of this dog. November in Mac Country means Thursday Night Football.